I didn't see you there. Well, what are you doing here? What are you? What are you? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Did you guys uh, like the whiteboard that I have? No, I really it sucks dick. It. Man, I'm tired. I want to go home. What? Well, well, Halloween was a few months ago, by the way. I want to take uh, this time. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take this opportunity uh, to induct you guys into a cult and teach you the Sea of Thieves lore. It's a video game by Rare uh, Publishers, and you probably heard of it recently. (laughs) You probably heard of it uh, because because of this down here. Is this the new banjo? (laughs) Is this the new banjo kazooie game? Yeah, I think Banjo Kazooie is actually in in part of the lore. Crash Bandicoot. I'm pretty sure he's part of the multiverse. It's the Sea of Thieves. It's an open world. Uh, PvP pirate game MPB. where you run around and you yell obscenities at kids you do while not you do that. fucking steal their shit. It's really pirate. fun. And then once you sink them, you realize they had no shit and everything was pointless. Mm-hmm. What was your question? What's PvP? Uh, penis versus penis. Next question. That's on. Can I take off my clothes? Yeah. No, you can't. Alright, would you guys like to introduce yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> right now, while you're shirtless. <laughs> you can't, you can't <laughs> take- you can't. <laughs> you, have to you, you, you have to fucking cut this. You just can't keep this in. Man, you get a fan to him. You can't a fan. <laughs> Ooh. You, the fucking you can't put that on YouTube. Buddy. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Dude, that dude. shit's on you. All right, we need to get started. Here. I'm overrated, by the way. I'm legal. He's, yeah, he's. I'm not. He's so I'm not to be very. Hey, clear. they didn't know that, Aiden. <laughs> Alright, alright. You, didn't show anything you uh, Pan, Panda Chris here. I don't know his name, but Panda. Use the fucking stick. This is why I'm gonna paint in here. Yeah, that's a great pen. What's your name? No, I'm, I'm, I'm Chris. What uh, do you do? It's all for I and your mom. Alright. Uh, no more kids. Fine, gentlemen. I'm Gromit. From Gromit. Wallace and Gromit. Wallace and Gromit. Cheese. Alright. Right. And, and Cameraman. Who are you? I'm Hayden. I, I want to go home. <laughs> sure you do. I haven't slept. <laughs> Why would you go home when you saw me? You can't go home. You've got five hours of editing to do after this. <laughs> All right. I gave you the one that will see a thieves. This is uh, the logo. I simplified it because I wasn't about to draw fucking like seven goddamn ships inside of that skull. Um, and this is pretty. I'm going to give a lecture on the lore of the game because a lot of people don't know. The game has a pretty deep lore. Not all of it makes sense. In fact, I would say most of the Sea of Thieves lore is utter garbage. When do we get the Captain Jack there? Uh, he's coming up. He's coming up. Okay. He's really soon. He's really soon. All right. Yeah. When do I get to go to the bathroom? I uh, never. never. Is, is this um, kind of... I'm about to piss on your whiteboard. All right. So yeah. What's your name? My name. Uh, my name is Drew. I'll be your professor here at Chimney University. How's it spelled? Uh, I got a YouTube channel called The Drow Detective. How's it spelled? It's <laughs> it's spelled D R U E. <laughs> no, oh, like blue, blue but gay. Like, yeah, yeah. No phonics. It's like that. Uh, okay. Yeah, what font would you write your name on if you had to write it in the font? Uh, papyrus. It would not. <laughs> 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 At the top. <laughs> I like All the right. chewy font. Okay, so uh, give me the rundown. Sea of Thieves. I think it's the Bermuda Triangle. I actually don't fucking know, but it is a location in the real world. You can't go there, it's only in a video game. <laughs> you get fucked on. No! <laughs> it's this little region surrounded by what is called the Devil's Shroud. And the Devil's Shroud is this magical, misty shit uh, that just Wait, basically. So there's, magic? there's a lot of magic, yes. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, is the Devil's like Shroud Skyrim? is basically this fog, and it will just fuck up materials. Like, it does kill people, it chokes them, but it. it not very efficiently. It's really good at just. Wrecking shit. So could you theoretically swim all the way? You could, <laughs> yes. But if you could hold be, your breath for a really long time. You'd have to be a strong swimmer, and also there's sea monsters and shit. If and Michael Thomas. Phelps could do it. Huh? Could, like, Michael Phelps do it, do you think? Yeah, Michael Phelps could do it. Okay, that's fair. Right. Um, I'm calling them up. Yeah. So that's what the Sea of Thieves is. Water break. Um, and the Devil's Shroud, the thing about the Shroud is, it's always moving and sort of kind of... As in the out. professional player shroud? Yeah, yeah. It's always moving, coming in and out. Um, regions are always being like discovered, like when the shroud moves away. Oh, there's shroud the moves. fucking yeah, it moves. Yeah, 
Hey. <laughs> yeah. I don't recognize, I don't recognize Shroud personally. Oh, okay. And it, it does that a few times. The Shroud also takes shit away. It gives and it takes. Um, you'll see me mention a, a many times throughout the selection. When's it gonna give a rat pet? Uh, never. Rare, rare actually is the Shroud, if you didn't know. And they, mm -hmm. they will never make a rat pet in the game. So you tell me that rat pet will never come out of the Shroud? Uh, no, never. Is that how, like, new players are introduced? They just enter the Shroud? No, new players, well, there's two ways to start the game, really. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the Shroud ebbs and flows, it gives and takes. Um, and you'll see me mention many times throughout this lecture where there will be an island, and an island gets swallowed up by Shroud, and no one goes there for a few, like, chapters or whatever. Shroud's swallowed. Like that. He's really good at, he's really good at Valorant. Alright, alright. So, you guys all know, if you play Sea of Thieves, you guys all know it's a pirate haven. Pirates love going there because they can just fuck around and do whatever they want. Like this is... They like, should, like, pirates should not be able to kill each other in the Sea of Thieves, all I gotta say. I agree, PvP actually sucks. <laughs> Take it out of the game! <laughs> pirates should not be pirating! <laughs> yeah, yeah, game. why are you, why are you taking other people's treasure in a pirate game? This is I don't game. understand. I don't understand, especially when I have an emissary flag up, bro. Why are you killing me? Dude, all I wanted to do was... Well, you guys all know it as a safe haven for pirates, but long ago, Sea of Thieves was inhabited by two other species. As far as I can tell, from the hints and everything, as far as I can decipher personally, the oldest species in the Sea of Thieves were the mer merfolk slash the, uh, slash the sirens. And the merfolk, for a while we thought they might be cursed humans, because one of the ways be to become a merfolk is actually you spend a lot of time around them, and then slowly you just become a merfolk. Um, so a lot of, uh, we originally thought that the merfolk were just a curse and they weren't their own species. There's lore and actually the most recent update that would suggest otherwise, that would suggest the merfolk are their own species. So merfolk, they're actually pretty chill. They have almost like a hive mind. It's kind of weird, because they have this song that they sing. And all merfolk all across the Sea of Thieves, yes. Are you gonna react to that song? Uh, it, it, you hear it every time a fucking mermaid pops up in the game. Oh, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they wave around and smoke and shit. Anyway, you, this song is how they communicate, and if you're a merfolk, you can always hear the song. So you're always singing, and your people, you can always hear people, so they kind of have a hive mind. Um, it's described later on around here um, that mer like, merfolk don't actually know what it means to forget, because they remember everything because of the song. And there's a character later on that can speak to merfolk because of some magic uh, items that she got, and she describes like having to explain to them what forgetting means, or what losing one of your kind means, and stuff like that. Anyway, the merfolk are pretty cool. Merfolk are kind of like werewolves, though. Um, oh. There's a lunar cycle. Uh, there's a lunar cycle, and every now and then, merfolk turn fucking batshit crazy. Do merfolk have periods? I think so. We don't, need to oh, nice. we don't know too much about merfolk. Uh, um, so yeah, that yes. It's Captain Jack Sparrow. Man. I, uh, maybe it's explained in Pirates 4. Uh, that's, I didn't watch that one. It was good, I enjoyed um, it. Uh, so anyway, really merfolk. merfolk are the good ones. But sometimes they can go through this, we think it's a lunar cycle um, that causes them to turn into something called sirens, and sirens are evil merfolk. Um, not all merfolk do this, it's just a select few. Usually when, there's like, when they're feeling really down in the dumps, when they're really sad, <laughs> it describes how um, the first merfolk met a tribe of ancients. Ancients were the people that lived here before the pirates. And they met this tribe of ancients, and the king of the merfolk tried to make friends with them. But they like bound them in chains and basically fucking uh, beat him up and tortured him. Yeah. Um, and then his wife, uh, one of the merfolk queens, she was like, that's uh, fucking gay. And she decided to wage war against the ancients for a little bit. And she lost, and her and her soldiers throughout this, uh, throughout this conflict, they realized that they couldn't hear the song anymore. Like, they couldn't hear the song the rest of the merfolk were singing. All they could hear was the song of sorrow, and they could only hear it between each other. And they became the sirens. They're a lot more alien in appearance. Merfolk in the game look like normal people, but blue, kind of. Uh, sirens look like just fish, like slimy fish people with these big, Two white uh, eyes. Um, there's like it. there's no hair. They're just completely like nautical. You were gonna ask something. 
I'm trying to get a visual image in my head. I was just thinking of fish people with cancer. Fish, fish. Yeah, pretty accurate. That's kind of accurate, yeah. Um, and they're all, uh, sirens and their folk bows tend to have this silvery blue skin. Anyway, that's the merfolk lore. Um, not too much right now. Then we get to the ancients. There are a few different tribes of ancients that we know of. Uh, there's the rock tribe or the stone tribe, which are like invented and stuff. And then there's the uh, the serpent tribe, which specialize in making alcohol from distilled snake venom. Nice. <laughs> My tribe. Um, but they, this is all shit that, by the way, everything I say in this section right here, the ancient merfolk lore, this is all shit, most shit, that we've just deciphered from cave paintings in the game. This is stuff we don't know for sure. We just deciphered this from cave paintings. Um, so yeah, there's a few tribes. Uh, there was one lost lost tribe uh, called the Fire Tribe, and they lived in the Devil's Roar, which is an entire uh, region. Yeah. Um, so what tribe was Captain Jack Sparrow part of? That's a good question. The Fire um, Tribe. I think it's explained somewhere around here. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's not too far off. We'll get there sometime. Okay. Um. So yeah, the, the ancients are these people that build civilization, and you gotta understand, the Sea of Thieves, in-game, all the islands are relatively small. Um, that's only because in the past like few centuries, uh, Sea of Thieves have gotten fucked over by rising tides. You know, the water levels have been absolutely, pretty much, like, skyrocketed. Um, all burned, all, so, all yeah, the fields. Yeah, so all, all, all the to. islands, all the islands used to be like mountain chains, and now they're all sort of mountain tips. Uh, global warming is real in the Sea of Thieves. <laughs> not in real life. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. I gotta burn my fossil fuels. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're we'll slide slide all that. And the ancients, the merfolk actually reach out to the ancients. They pretty much forgot what happened with the sirens. They they know um, like that that whole kingdom went missing, but they're like, eh, probably probably nothing to do with the people, or at least they kind of seem. So the rest of the merfolk reach out to the ancients as a whole. The whole sort of shebang, and they make an alliance. Uh, but the ancients can't understand the merfolk. So the ancients are really good with magic and shit, and they make these magic earrings. There are many sets of them, but they make these magic earrings that when you wear them, you can understand the song of the merfolk. That is so stupid. <laughs> um, and that's one of the many magic items that the ancients make uh, throughout the game's history. How much did that one cost? How much did that cost? Yeah, how much was that magic item worth? A few schmeckles, I think. Alright, well, that's the uh, main currency in the Sea of Thieves, actually. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so. I'm gonna move my notes over here just in case. Notes. So, uh, the Old Mother, you've probably seen that up there if you're not watching this on YouTube, which means the three of you have probably seen it. Um, I can't see well, it. I haven't seen it, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the the Old can't. Mother is the oldest and possibly the first Kraken. Um, and krakens, you gotta understand, and see if these krakens aren't squids. They're like giant fish, they have these beaks, and they have beady, like, yellow eyes. And their entire back end, like, you know how usually the back end of the fish is like a mermaid tail, basically, you know? You know what I'm saying. The entire, the entire back end of a kraken is just tentacles, and the end of each tentacle has a mouth that splits three ways. That's what I'm So what you just explained was a giant fucking squid. No, 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 because they aren't, like, the, the tentacles go out, like, the back. They don't come around and surround the face. They aren't, like, that's an octopus. No, they aren't, like, bull, they aren't skeleton. Like, they have an, okay, wait, wait. they have an actual skeleton, is the difference. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. They, have a, they have a bone structure, and if you look up pictures, you'll know what I'm saying. It's sort of hard to describe what they look like. Um, but yeah, a lot of people, especially, like, in the early days, you know, talking like Captain Falcon, making videos on Kraken's Fall. Talking about all the Kraken skeletons around, and people in the comments are gonna be like, "Hey, you know what? Actually, squids don't have skeletons, so we can't be Kraken skeletons." <laughs> oh yeah. Well, the Thieves also have magic. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, just to explain right away, Krakens look entirely different. So the old mother, first Kraken maybe, mother of all Krakens probably. Um, skeletons. Yeah. Are fucking cool. Squids do have skeletons. Did you want me to tell you that? Not like, good. not like real good ones. They have small I don't ones. know. Um, anyway, uh, the old mother is basically terrorizing the merfolk and the oh, elves. Okay. No, I'm 
Ancient. Like old. Miss um, Muncie old, bro. Like, what's the oldest lolly you can think of? Oh, Miss uh, Muncie. Uh, double. <laughs> 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 I was gonna say double that. <laughs> she's really old and she's really big. She's like the size of multiple items in, in the game. Today. So like on a band compared. Uh, maybe band and a half. Ooh, yeah. shit. That kind of big. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, for those of you at home. Uh, the Chimkin University uses the Dan measuring system. Or, or the Hayden. Or the Hayden. Uh, well, Hayden's a unit of the Dan system. Yeah. So, uh, are you recording? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so Camera died and the cameraman wasn't fucking watching it because Hayden's not here. I'm so tired. Hard. So, um, real quick, I'm just going to recap Old Mother and Tribute Pete because I think that's all we missed. Um, so, Old Mother, Mother of all Krakens, um, she was terrorizing the ancients of the Merfolk. Merfolk uh, and ancients made an alliance to make this metal that couldn't be locked, picked, couldn't be broken, kind of uh, <laughs> And they chained her with it, she started it at the bottom of the sea. She's now guarded by a one-eyed kraken that I suspect to be one eye the constellation of a shark, even though it's not a shark I think. I have a one-eye. Nice. <laughs> so do I. Uh, nice. All of the, the shroud begins moving in on the ancient civilization, all their wooden buildings dying and stuff. Um, the shroud, it plants trees though, so it doesn't kill the trees. Um, yeah, Blast Tree so it doesn't kill them. Uh, <laughs> they moved to an island called Tribute Peak, that's the last bastion of civilization. They build monuments and shit for the people, they record the history there, like, remember us. Then they all die because the shroud moves in and kills them. Like three years. So yeah. that's basically Shan. He's kind of cool. 
Um, throughout the entire book, you're kind of, he, he sort of says, there's, there's infighting, essentially. In the crew of the Magpie's Wings, there's infighting within like three chapters. <laughs> um, and he, the dude, stop reloading imaginary fucking flintlocks. <laughs> Uh, and eventually, um, like, eventually there's infighting, and you don't know what side Shan is on really until, like, I don't know, this point. Um, but yeah, eventually he does, he's cool with fancy. Uh, then the final person. <laughs> Jordan. Why are you just now making your Jordan Ramsey joke? I talked about Ramsey two minutes ago. I don't know, it's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> cool. Person who recruits is a guy named Rathbo. Rathbo's like this sort of Bones. taller, sort of bronze skinned, I think he's British. I think British. he's, he's supposed to be Bones. Bottle bottle. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's supposed to be English, I think, and he dresses really regally. He comes from like a bit of a like a merchant family. All of his uh, bloodline are from one of ten house posh. Um posh, no. Okay. Like he's a he's a rough, tall dude, essentially. But, but he's regal really for sure. Like he wears like fancy coats, uh, you know. Like this, but his most iconic outfit is like this big green coat with like gold and stuff on it. Ooh. Um, yeah, it's sort of, it's very regal, not necessarily posh, I would say, because posh implies a sense of cleanliness. Pirates don't have that. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I've watched every single movie, and I'm like every single thing. That's my pirate dog, sorry, she's a corgi with one eye. Um, he's, he's also really, really old. Dude, of course you he's as yourself. old as Shan. Bro, I bet you went out of your way to buy yourself a fucking dog. No, he did head. not come like that. <laughs> um, all his entire life is 14, 14 years long. I want to see so, baby uh, Sarge. Anyway, uh, away from Sarge and back onto the Queen's portion. So, the crew of the Magpie's Wing consists of Shan the Tinkerer, Rathbone the Merchant kind of dude. Uh, Mercia, the science person, and Ramsey, the guy who has cringe blue pill beliefs. But way past. too many members for a sport. Yeah, it's way too many. <laughs> and originally, originally, um, crew sizes in the game uh, were going to be double what they are now. Right. So you could have potentially had an eight man gallery. That would have been actually kind of fucking cool. <laughs> it would have it been cool. It would have been chaotic. It would have been chaotic as all hell, and there would have been too many people on game chat. <laughs> but it would have been cool if you had to. It would have been funny for sure. The, the um, yeah. would never be up. Originally, originally the crew size for the sloop was four. It was cut down to two. Uh, and the sloop is the smallest ship in the game of the three that you can currently play. Maybe a fourth one comes in the future, but we'll get to that around here. Um, so this is our crew. This is our teenagers with attitude. This is our team. Um, and they and Rams is like um, Sea of Thieves. Uh, he actually it's not called the Sea of Thieves. Everyone just sort of knows about the Devil's Shroud, it's each of ships, and those rumors of a land inside the Devil's Shroud um, that people go to, and it's cool. <laughs> there's, yeah. rumors of it. there's rumors of it. There's a party. And Rams is like, we're going there. We're going straight through the middle of the Devil's Shroud. And they do it, they like, since it's a sloop and it's a small ship, it sort of maneuvers its way through. Um, small, you'll notice smaller ships are very good at getting through the Devil's Shroud. Bigger ships uh, kind of suck at it. We'll get to that. Um, we'll get to that in the um, So yeah, uh, the sloop goes in, and they first discover Thieves Haven, um, which isn't named Thieves Haven yet, but it's an island. It's the first island they find. Um, and they sort of like camp out there for the night, and they're like, in the morning, uh, we go get treasure, and we go plunder the sea of thieves. Yeah. Um, uh, next, uh, I think we next see them a month to three months later is the next chapter that we see them in. Um, and they are basically, like, they've been looting the Sea of Thieves like crazy, just plundering the ancient vaults, getting all this gold, uh, haven't made contact with the Merfolk yet, um, no, that is coming for a while. Um, but they're getting all this gold, they're fucking, uh, busting, right? But the ship can't carry too much more and they're running out of supplies. So they have to make a trip back to the real world, and they go to this tavern. I think it's called the Unfired Pistol, or that it may be called that later. But eventually, this tavern's going to be called the Unfired Pistol. Ramsey knows the barkeep there. 
and also a secret about Ramsey um, that we sort of was hinted at in the first chapter. Oh, fuck, I forgot. Uh, Mercia, uh, a smart person, science person, revealed to be a chick, like halfway in the chapter one. She dresses like a man to go do pirate things. What? Yeah. Uh, Mercia is a chick, and Rathbone's mad about it. Because uh, Rathbone's sexist, maybe? I don't know. Based? <laughs> Why? It's actually implied he doesn't mind that she's a chick, he just doesn't like being kept out of the league. So that's sort of like, right away you get some character development with Rathbone. He doesn't like player one moment. Yeah, he doesn't like being kept out, so that comes into play there. No? Anyway, okay. they get back to the real world, and everyone in Ramsey's hometown is like, shit, this guy actually, he didn't die, he's bad. <laughs> uh, what'd you do? And Ramsey's like, shh. I will give a speech at the tavern later about this, about what we did. And then they go there and they do that. And he's um, the like, yo, we got a fuck ton of treasure, and yo, it's really cool and everything. And, um, yeah, we're basically rich and set up for life. <laughs> no! <laughs> um, but pirate life is too good for them, huh? Right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's sort of revealed here uh, that Ramsey does have a wife and kids. Two kids specifically and their twins. I hope he leaves them. He does. <laughs> uh, he actually uh, technically already did. Like, he went to the Sea of Thieves for a month, came back, his wife moved away because she was tired of his bullshit. So she's, she's like, Ramsey, you're, you're being a pirate and everything. We don't actually meet her until later. Well, we don't actually meet her at all, uh, but we don't even figure out what her name was until later. Um, and uh, his two children do come and play um, later on, though, and it's kind of cool uh, when they arrive. Okay. Um, but anyway, so they're having all this fun and revelry. And this entire time they're being heckled uh, by a by a group of no good no good scoundrels That's led by no good. <laughs> led by this man named Stitcher Jim. Uh, Stitcher Jim is like, oh you ain't oh I can you ain't oh I can't you know say it is my yeah hmm? uh, yeah Stitcher Jim and his friends are heckling these guys and Ranch is like oh fucking we should find out bitch. <laughs> Um, and that basically quiets him out. Um, but later, Rathbone, Rathbone sort of slips to the table after Mercia, Shan, and Ramsey have gone back to their ship. Rathbone slips over and he gives the map to the Sea to, to the sea of Thieves to stick to Jim. And he's like, hey, hey boys. Uh, this is it. Here's the map. <laughs> um, and this is Rathbone's first move into the trail. That's why I think it's the trail up here. Is this their first merchant through this? Or, uh... The trading companies? Yeah, is this their first trading company? The first trading company does not come into play until the end of the this Um, hey, check camera. It's on. Camera check. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is his first uh, sign of betrayal. Then, we flash back next chapter, takes place a year later, and we're in, like, uh, in media res, we're in a battle between Mackay's wing and a brigantine. I think it's a brigantine. And they basically shoot, and Ramsey's crew ends up winning. And Ramsey's like, oh my god, I'm so tired of all these pirates that came here like six months ago all of a sudden and started being in the sea. I thought it was we were a secret place. Now everyone knows about it. And Ramsey's kind of miffed about that. No one knows yet that Rathbone and Trey and, and gave the map to stick to Um And you'll, see, you'll notice I've got names over here. Uh, Stitcher Jim is one of the villains. And you'll notice Ramsey, Mercy, Rathbone, and Shane. Oh, Rathbone's a good guy? Right now. Okay. What? Wait, so you're gonna erase his name there and put it over there? Yeah, I'll erase his name later. That's the only Every time someone turns evil, I'll erase the name over No one ever turns good or evil. <laughs> but every time someone turns evil, I'll erase it. Sounds like what? Pirates. Yeah, that's not like pirates. Um, are there only good pirates and bad pirates? Which one are you? No pirates. Pirate, I'm a good pirate. So, I'm on mute. Um, Pirate Lord, or fuck, <laughs> Ramsey. Oh, <laughs> Ramsey gets an idea that they're gonna make a secret hideout on Thieves Haven. So they go into that, and that's where they stash all the treasure until they're ready to go and sell it. They get back there like <laughs> a few weeks later, and the place is trashed. <laughs> the place has been busted into. Everyone's shit's been stolen, and everyone's like, "Well, shit." <laughs> um, um, but there is one. There is one little area left. Shan's workshop. He built it by himself in like a separate little area. And that's, uh, when you get in there, it's Rathbone and Shan at first. Like, Shan's like, hey, uh, I'm just going to be grabbing some one right now. He's having a hard time. He's beating himself up about my shit that he's stolen. Um, but if you follow me, Rathbone, I do have a little like, seller. Uh, 
So they go down into uh, Shan's workshop, and Shan has plans there for like thick cannons, which can be used to fire people out of it. Mm. And this is the modern day cannon design that we have in CFDs where people can do that. Nice. And it is, it is a setup for a plot point that gets paid off later. Oh. <laughs> Twice, actually. <laughs> Um, right. And kind of the same way. Um, I know, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so yeah, yeah basically, they, they've been betrayed twice at this point. Mercy is beginning to suspect that there's a rat in the list, if you're pardoning my, my usage of the term. <laughs> God dang, bro, rat had me excited. Mercy is beginning to think there's a rat. Mercy is beginning to think um, but she suspects Rathbone, but she doesn't have any evidence to condemn him yet. And she has a little more like, ooh, I know it's you. Oh, dang, you're on that. Like, what would you call him? Blink, 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 Or like, um, No. Yeah. Is one of them blink, blink, boy? Uh, I think Shan is supposed to be here. No, I'm blink, blink, boy. Okay. So then Ramsey, so while Rathbone and Shan are having like this little fucking discussion in the workshop, we come over to Ramsey and Mercia. And Ramsey's sitting there like just chugging rum after all of his all of his stuff's been destroyed and ransacked. Oh, yeah. And Mercy comes down, she's like, man, what are we gonna do about this? Like, we gotta give it the other man. And he's like, Mercy, Mercy, <laughs> and a drunken soup, he's like, I got it. This place has magic and shit. You notice that? You know, whenever I eat, I whenever I caught a banana, my wounds heal. I found that how does that even work? <laughs> and, 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 Mercy is, and Mercy's like, what the what the fuck? What's that? Open it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Ramsey's basically Dutch, but if everything somehow went right for him. <laughs> um, so Ramsey's like, we gotta search for magic. So I'm gonna go to every tavern. We're gonna go to every tavern to see if he's. And I'm gonna get up on the table and I'm gonna be like, if you stole our shit, uh, hand it over and, and all that. Um, and he's gonna make a big distraction while Mercy is gonna sneak around and go, Seen any magic here? I don't know. I don't know why Mercia couldn't just do that without the distraction. But hey, <laughs> you know, with a magic cat. With a magic yeah. Cat. So eventually, uh, they get led uh, to this small little island. I think it's one of the. I think it's the uncharted island at K9 in the game. That's fucking um, that. There are three uncharted islands, so it's pretty. Actually, there are only two now because one of them recently died. No. Um, so it's pretty easy. Um, yeah. Um, so they get, they go to this island. <laughs> and they're looking around. Shan and Rathbone haven't been informed about this search for magic, by the way. Shan and Rathbone have no idea what's going on. Um, so they stay on the boat while Mercy and Ramsey are on the island, and all of a sudden the sinkhole happens, and they get sucked down below the sands into like this ancient bowl. And Mercia finds these pairs of black ear, like this pair of black earrings. And she puts them on, and all of a sudden she can hear this song. And it sort of like makes sense to her. These are the mermaid earrings from earlier. So Mercia has these earrings, and she's like, hey, uh, Ramsey, I can hear shit you now. And Ramsey's like, I thought that I was high. <laughs> um, and she's like, but, but no, I can, uh, it's like the song is calling out for help. Uh, we gotta go help. What, what's something out there? Um, and the Ramsey's like, oh, okay, well, let's go get geared up. So they rush back to the ship. Rathbone's like, hey, guys, what's going on? And Ramsey's like, no time to talk. We gotta go. <laughs> Rathbone, no Honestly, I can kind of understand where, Rath where Rathbone is coming from at this point. <laughs> um, but training them in the beginning was a little cringe, but now I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too surprised. Um, so, rescue mission. They find that this uh, pirate, like, fleet, so there's, like, I think three galleons. I parked at this unnamed island, and they go there and they discover that these pirates have trapped two mermaids uh, in this sort of cage in an underground river. And they just keep it there like that, oh, fucking mad, fucking stupid mermaid. Because <laughs> no one's ever seen a mermaid at this point. This is the first time mermaids have been spotted since the days of the ancients. Mm -hmm. um, so the crew of the magpies then go in there, they mess shit up, um, they free the mermaids, and this is what makes an everlasting alliance with Ramsey and the mermaids. He's like, hey, um, I didn't know you guys were here until now. Um, and the saved you, and that's pretty cool. Um, it's cool that you guys are here. Uh, so like, is there any magic around? 
<laughs> Can I have a hit of that magic? You and, don't get me. Yeah. And they lead him to another unnamed island. I think it might actually be the same island. I read this book like two weeks ago. Give me some I don't remember any details. Um, they lead him to another island where he finds the bones of the old mother. And it is described with the magpie's wing. This is going to sound confusing, because I said that the old mother stopped dead at the bottom of the ocean. It said that the magpie's wing can actually sail in between the rib cage of the old mother. So maybe she was suffocated on land, and then the boat, we don't know. We don't know. Anyway, the, it's like the scenic scene as the magpie's wing goes through the rib cage. Um, and Ramsey collects some of the chains that were used to bind the old mother, and he's like, I got a plan. And they take the chains with them. They somehow break off the unbreakable chains and bring them with them on their sleep uh, to be safe. Them. And they're doing this for at least six months, I want to say. They're just continually hauling these chains back and forth to be safe, mm -hmm. uh, working on something. And then it's Golden Sands Outpost. We get to Golden Sands Outpost. Uh, Ramsey has called a brethren alliance of sorts. He is called an Amut, a famous pirate captain. Um, the first one is Grey Marrow, who you'll notice Grey Marrow is over here on the villains. Yeah, I recognize Grey Marrow. I kicked his ass before. <laughs> he's like the road to the sea piece. He never stops coming back. <laughs> anyway, right now he's flesh and blood, and he's not a skeleton yet. Um, and Grey Marrow is uh, Grey Marrow's one of the people there. He's known as like this merciless pirate captain um, who like just basically fucks around. He's like the stereotypical pirate. Check camera. And Sleep. What? Check camera. Okay. Alright. I think five minutes ago. <laughs> Alright. Um, so yeah, Graham Rose is basically this mer merciless captain who his crew hates him, but they still want him Because he's right. he gets them good gold. Like he, he's good for them. Uh second captain is Eli Slate. Eli Slate right here. He's the captain of the Morning Star. Um, and he's this really cool, like noble man. He's sort of like he's kind of like Shan where he meets quiet and you don't know whose side he's on until the end. But he's this very cool and collected, like, older man. He's sort of like six bags. Okay, all right. Uh, and then we finally get to Briggsy. Uh, Briggsy's like the wild card of this movie, where Eli Slate and Grey Marrow are both these decorated captains that own, like, big galleons. Uh, Briggsy owns uh, this little shitty little sloop, <laughs> um, and she's, like, the only person on it, um, except for maybe Wild Rose. Maybe she's here at this point. Uh, I don't know, though. Um, anyway, so yeah, Briggsy's basically a solo super. And she's named Briggsy because the prison on a brig, or the prison on a pirate ship, or any ship, is called the brig. And she is really good at getting out of, like, tight situations. She's good at, like, lockpicks, or getting out of a jail cell, essentially. So they name her, her nickname Briggsy. Uh, and she basically goes around doing that sort of thing. That, uh, mother thing. Um, yeah. And that's, and that's basically everyone who's here. You've got Ramsey, Briggsy, Eli Slate, Grey Marrow, and all of it. And um, Ramsey reveals that what they've been working on with the unbreakable metal all this time, the unlockable metal, they've been working on making chests that can't be opened. And the pirate lord, he, Ramsey begins calling himself the pirate lord now, he has stashed all of his treasure into these chests so that no one can open them unless he has a set of skeleton keys that Ramsey has. Ramsey has these skeleton keys that can open every chest he built. So basically, he suggests this system of commerce where uh, pirates go out, they dig up his treasure chests, and then they bring it to Ramsey. He opens them and like gives them basically most of the cut of what's inside, and he keeps the rest to sort of keep replenishing the economy and keep doing that. Um, so this is Ramsey's big plan, his big idea, and everyone's like, uh, "Okay, I mean, I don't know how that would work." Like Raymer at this point is like. What are you suggesting fucking peace on the Sea of Thieves? Hell no, I'm out of here. <laughs> so Grey Marrow dips. Um, and his crew does too. Um, yeah, Grey Marrow leaves. Um, he also, Ramsey also reveals he's been working on cursed chests. There's one cursed chest, the chest of sorrow, which cries and fills the ship up with water. Then there's the chest of a thousand drugs, which makes you drunk if you're trying to fail it. And he has like, he has like, multiple tests. He has Briggsy like try to lockpick into one of the um, just the normal chests and she can't do it. You know, she's the best lockpick. He has the shipwright. He tries, he says, if I'll give you my entire hoard if you can pick up the chest of a thousand drugs 
and bring it all the way to your shipwright station. And he can't even get out the door. So Ramsey, by doing these little tribulations and stuff, Ramsey proves that he knows what he's talking about. He proves it's reliable. Um, but then at the end of the meeting, basically everyone's like, okay, kind of catching on with this. At the end he says, oh, and also, I want to form this big alliance on the Sea of Thieves. And you guys are all going to tell me like, why? And the chapter erupts into fucking chaos. Um, this is actually the point of Grandma. He's like, alliance. Get out of here, alliance. Move. I got to receive you and take your stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's when Grandma leaves. Then, yeah, yeah, we're on alliance question mark right now. Uh, so, <laughs> so basically, the taverns erupt into a bunch of bullshit right now. Briggsy and Eli Slade are still there, though. Uh, Eli Slade's kind of like, okay, this, this could work out, maybe. Maybe this could work out. And Briggsy, I think he's dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Briggsy stays to listen. Eli Slade's like, this could work out. Um, but then, as they're in the middle of negotiating, he's settling down the tavern. I'm recording how long, long I'm recording how long you go. Uh, just in case if you ever be like, hey, how long have we been recording? Okay, how long? Twelve have we minutes, forty-two seconds. Wow. So it's a total of maybe half an hour. Okay. Yeah. Um, five minutes at this point. All right. So, uh, yeah, as they're in the middle of like calming down the tavern, all of a sudden they hear these big bells outside, like the outpost bells, the signal attack, and they hear this huge roar, and they go outside and they see one eye, the kraken that was meant to defend Old Mother. One eye is somehow still alive. What's he doing there? He's and he's there. He's old mother. Except, well, it's because Ramsey disturbed old mother's bones. By taking the young by taking, chain. By taking the chains Brother. that were unable to be taken. I'm not only for a bit, So he disturbed one eye, and one has been tracking them all this time. That's and finally, one eye attacks. He attacks Golden Sands Outpost. Um, I think Briggsy's ship sinks like right away. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not um, but then they go to the Magpie's Wing and the Morning Star starts shooting up and they're like, bah, 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 and they're trying to take down this big Kraken. Um, it's not it's not just tentacles as well that are like emerging. Right now, One Eye's entire body is sort of like lifted out of the water, like the front of his, of his body, and the tentacles are coming in behind it. Oh, yeah, yeah. A single one. The other one was like scratched out. Oh, so sad. Poor one eye. Yeah. Um, uh, so anyway, they start doing battle against one eye, and Shan gets this idea. He gets uh, a chest of sorrow, and he's like, he, he puts it in the cannon, and he aims it up at one eye's tentacle, and like when it opens its mouth, because all the tentacles are in the mouth, I think I just got that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When it opens up its mouth, to like, because uh, Kraken tentacles for some reason have this suction ability. So like when it opens up its mouth, it can just like suck people right up into its mouth and eat them from the tentacles. Um, so yeah, when it, when it starts trying to give the big suck to the Magpie's wing, he shoots the chest of sorrow in there, and it gets lodged in its like mouth, and it starts basically uh, kind of like choking on the chest, um, kind of you know not having a good time. Um, and then Shan's like, ah, oh, well shit, I meant for that to go all the way down to fill the thing's stomach with water, and as if. Kraken's can't deal with water in stomach for some reason. <laughs> but anyway, it's just Shan's plan. So Shan's like, all right, Mercy, I'm getting in this fucking cannon, <laughs> and you're going to have to shoot me on the tentacle. Uh, and Mercy's like, no, I don't know about this, Rick. <laughs> um, but eventually she, uh, she secedes. I don't think that's the right word. And she, she shoots uh, Shan out of the cannon on the tentacle. Shan's like having a little thing. He's like, got a sword. He's like, attack and he's jabbing the tentacle and he pushes the box, he pushes the chest down into his door. Oh. Um, the thing almost swallows him, but uh, he manages to like free fall down into the water. And at first Mercy's like, oh shit, uh, Shannon's dead. <laughs> There's no way he survived that. But then she sees uh, a merfolk, Baba, uh, and he carries Shan all the way to the shores of Golden Sands Outpost nice. uh, and saves Shan's life. Let's go. Um, There's, I forget how it happens, but Mercy, oh, I think um, Ram specifically says, uh, Mercy, uh, go help out the Morning Star, because they're having troubles over there. Get on the guns, start shooting the Kraken, and go help out the Morning Star. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, she goes, she gets off the ship to go to help them, and then it's just Ramsey and Rathbone left in the ship right now. Um, and Ramsey, <laughs> Ramsey says specifically, like, when he gets back on the ship, because he was off doing some, I forget what he was doing as well. 
But he gets back on the ship, he's like, oh, I don't know, I thought my crew used to be bigger than this. <laughs> uh, you know, as, as he's got him himself and Raph in there. Uh, but anyway, he loads up like a big barrel, uh, I think, into one of the cannons. And he aims it at the crack of God, because he deduces the eye must be vulnerable if something else took it off one of them. So he's, he fires, he fires the cannon, barrel goes an eye, one is like, and then it like, more whips like around, no eye, not one it whips eye. around and goes back under the waves. It has been defeated. However, it's this, it causes this big tidal wave, which knocks Ramsey off of the side of the ship. But he manages to catch the side just in time. And he's like, he's like trying to climb up, and all the no. waves are fucking with him. And then Rathbone comes down, and he's and he grabs Ramsey's hand just as Ramsey's about to slip. And Ramsey's like, "Fucking thank you, uh, pull me up, brother." And and Rathbone, he takes the skeleton keys from around Ramsey's neck, long live and he the says, king. "Long live the king." <laughs> and then he drops Ramsey into the water and sails no. off into the sunset. And then Ramsey swims out of the water, and he goes, "Bro, what the fuck?" <laughs> and this is where Rathbone becomes officially known as the Gold Hoarder. <gasps> so he was the Gold um, Hoarder all along. Rathbone, he's not there anymore. But I'm not gonna write it down because the gold hoarder is the first step down the road. He was the gold hoarder all along. That one becomes known as the gold hoarder. I was because lied to. He stole the skeleton keys. Um, no one. It's kind of implied that no one knows what happened when the magpies leave because um, it's like no one was there. You know, Mercy and Shan were both on the island. Yeah, no one actually saw Rathbone kill Ramsey, but everyone suspects. No one knows how the game was played. <laughs> exactly. Um. Yeah, so he's got all the skeleton keys, so he can unlock Ramsey's chests. And with Stitcher Jim, he forms the first trading company on the Sea of Thieves called the Gold Hoarders. Let's go. Um, <laughs> My favorite. And together, they basically track down all of Ramsey's treasure and open it, and they try to take the gold. But they notice, as they're hoarding all this treasure, and just sort of sitting on it, because they don't spend it a lot. As they're hoarding all this treasure, and Rathbone's back in the real world now, he's kind of done with the Sea of Thieves. He's kind of like, My people will bring the treasure. You know, because he's built up this big company on the of Thieves, and they're always bringing treasure, and they keep the cut. So at this point, he's made copies of the skeleton keys for all of his um, uh, liaisons, all of his like higher-ranking gold hoarders, so they can open the chests and bring the gold to him. Um, and he started to sit back, and they notice that bits of their like their veins aren't red and blue anymore; they've become like the shimmery gold. And they've noticed that parts of their body have begun to turn into gold. This is where we learn that the ancients, uh, there were a lot of curses in the Sea of Thieves back in the day. And the ancients cursed a lot of their gold and a lot of their items with these sort of effects that would turn people into gold or like turn them into skeletons uh, and stuff. And most of the most of the curses on the Sea of Thieves come from ancient treasure. Because they're kind of they're kind of fucking uh, <laughs> mad lives. <laughs> you know, they're basically they're like, uh, we can't have this shit, no one can. They curse all the time. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, Rafa notices this and he's like, yeah, that's I got my eye on this way. Um, eventually one of his liaisons come to him though. I think it is Stitcher Jim. It might not be actually. I know that Stitcher Jim is a gold hoarder at this point though. Um, and one of his liaisons comes up and he says, uh, Sir, we, we found a new island on the Sea of Thieves. Uh, it's called Tribute Peak. And we found it and then the, uh, there's a lot of gold that's supposed to be there because it was relaxed ash from the ancient society. And Rathbone's like, Oh, it's probably swimming, don't worry about it. And then he fucking sneaks out on the ship and he's like, I'm gonna take all that shit for myself. I'm not even gonna have my boys. Yeah. So he sneaks all the way back to Tribute Peak, all the way back to the Sea of Thieves. First time he's been there in potentially years. And he goes down there, he sees this beautiful landscape, and he goes down below, and he finds the treasure boards, and he starts, oh my god, I'm gonna have to come back because there's so much gold down there. But he loads up all he can onto the suit, so it's heavy with gold. Uh, and he starts sailing away. And at this point, his entire right arm has been turned into gold. So he's right. sort of like steering the ship like this. He's like, ah, I can pay someone to fix that when I get back to the real world. You know? you. He's like, he's like, I got all the money in the fucking universe. I don't even, I don't even care. So he's still, it's described like, like it's a hot day, so sweat's beating down his face. He's got a gold arm, so it's heavy and it's aching. He's sailing away from Tribute Peak. When out behind uh, these big rocks come two ships. One of them is the Morgenstern. And Eli Slate's there. And he's just fucking there and he's like, we got you, bitch. We lured you here because we knew you'd want to come here. 
and you fell through the trap, you even came alone. How stupid are you? And he just runs this into Rathbone's face. Oh, and Rathbone's like, Eli, sweetie, I thought you uh, died or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he hasn't seen Eli's face in years, so he just assumed that he died. That's all I think, really. Um, and also, Mercia's on the ship. Dang. And Mercia's, Mercia has a fucking sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Shan basically made this thing called the Eye of Reach, where he attached a bottle, like a, a drum bottle, to a musket to make it like a sniper rifle. What? So you can sort of like aim in and stuff, and that's one of Shan's inventions, the Eye of Reach. And she zooms in and she shoots like a powder barrel on um, uh, on Rathbone's ship. I think I've been accidentally calling him Ramsey. Have I? No. Okay, I've been calling him Rathbone. Okay, that's it. Um, so yeah, Rathbone, uh, his ship gets blown up and he sinks to the bottom of the ocean and Mercia, Mercia says, the pirate lord sends his regards. Um, and he sinks all the way down to the ocean. And it is revealed in the next chapter that Ramsey actually didn't die, he was saved by Mercia. In all those years, he's been planning. He's been forming his alliance in the Sea of Thieves while Rathbone's been gone. Um, and he's, uh, Briggsy and Eli Slate are part of this alliance. He's conducted a new ship called the Athena's Fortune. That's his flagship. They even make a chant that they sing when they're on the way. It's fucking shit up. It's called, it's the We Shall Sail Together. I'm sure mm -hmm. you've heard it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty popular chant for the game. Um, and yeah, so they basically go around and do all this cool adventure stuff. Uh, uh, camera check. That's kind of a thing. Gold border, uh, so Rathbone, kind of dead. At least we think. At least we think Rathbone's dead. Um, no, he was the coolest guy. <laughs> uh, but he, he does. does Captain Jack Spare? He's not Captain Jack Spare. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he does, so later we see Ramsey is alive. And he's working with his alliance. But eventually, like, Shan and Mercy are both retired because they're not retired enough this. Like, we've had enough of this life. You know, we're a stuff. And Ramsey's like, Ramsey, like, no. he says the day he decided to retire was the day he was selling the Athena's fortune. And he looked around, he was going to make a joke. And he, like, looked at Mercy, like, where Mercy should have been if she wasn't there. And he looked at Shan, and Shan was there, and he's like, shit, we're not going to get there. And they were quit doing this whole thing. Oh, um, lonely man. So he sails to Tribute Peak. To speak with the gold border. Because Rathbones is kind of still alive. He goes down to the vault and it is revealed that Rathbones is entirely undead now. He is a skeletal lord called the gold border. He dresses like in the gold border green cloak. He has a completely golden chin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like this very like solid gold chin. He's got these big emerald eyes. Um, and uh, he's got all these bits on that are made out of gold. His main weapon is a gold shovel that he uses to just whack people. Wow. Um, and Ramsey goes up there and he's like, yeah. Um, he basically floats in front of Rathbone. And Rathbone doesn't even try to fight back. He, he goes up to the gold and he goes up to the gold and he's like, how many fucking years did you spend hauling every piece of gold from your wreck back onto this island? You know? how, how, long, how much of your fucking life have you wasted with you? All because you just couldn't get along. Um, and then he's like, well, I'm retiring that film. I'm sorry that I couldn't do it to the captain for the pieces. So you know what I'm saying? And then he's like, yes. Deuces. And then he kills them? Uh, no, he didn't kill them. Uh, he just lets Ramsey walk away and he's like sitting there on the stone with his picture right over there. So. Nice. Um, so yeah, uh, that is the end of the famous Fortnite part one. Oh! Any questions? Any questions about Athena's Fortnite Part 1 before we move on? Um, why did... Alright, I'm done. Alright. Lord Ramsey. Nice. Okay. Alright, so why did... Uh... Alright, I'm done. Alright, so the origins... Why did it have one eye? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm done. Uh, it's never explained. Origins comes. Okay, so, um... Can you learn about me again? Oh, uh, so... <laughs> wait, 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 what? Nothing. <laughs> Alright, can you just explain part one one more time? <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I need to right. So, the Origins comics are five, currently five issues of comic books online that you can get for free on Amazon. Ooh. These, these, all five of these comics are completely free, and I actually do recommend them because they are kind of worth it. At least these last two are very much worth it. So, uh, we start with The Price of Gold, 
Which, okay, so the point of the first three, like the price of gold, bonds, and women's original order, the point of those comics is that we're supposed to learn the origin story for each of the three trading companies, the Golden Orders, the Merchant Alliance, and the Order of Souls. Thing about that is, Athena's Fortnite Part 1 is entirely the origin story for the Golden Orders. So, the price of gold doesn't tell you the origin story for the Golden Orders, because you probably should already know that. It basically just tells you about this one Golden Order named Humphrey, who like joined the Golden Orders to pay for his wife's cancer, uh, and she lived in the Golden Order, or something like that. He, he used to own this merchant shop, and he was taken down by the Grand Mercantile Union, who will come to play later after. Um, but yeah, the, the main important thing to learn from the price of gold is even though Tribute Peak is enveloped by a shroud uh, now, uh, it goes in like a lunar cycle. So every now and then, every month, I think, the gold hoarders know a secret passageway to get through the shroud to Tribute Peak. Um, and they use this to pay their fealty to the gold hoarder every month. Those um, damn dirty hoarders. Exactly. And this is all the gold hoarders that we meet and name all the bits of gold on them. They're all like these very like archback, like greedy people. Did really cool. Humphrey come to gold first? Kind of like rats. Yeah, he is gold first. No. But he was there for a good cause. They're all there. For, I, originally, like most gold hoarders don't start out because they're greedy. They start yeah. Out they want gold for I was gold there, but I was I just wanted the gold. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna lie, right? I just wanted bitches, <laughs> and I got them. Um, gold. So yeah, we also learned that even though the gold hoarders are allowed to keep a cut of the treasure that pirates bring to them, because they have the skeleton keys, they unlock chests that people pick up from the pirate lord. The pirate lord Ramsey, who has now made a, uh, it's, he's made a ghostly tavern beneath every outpost, and it's like these portals that lead to this one location. And the tavern is called Athena's Fortune, and it's made out of the wreck of Athena's Fortune, mm -hmm. which is in Splash, if you recall correctly. Mm -hmm. um, he replenishes the economy every now and then by putting more chests down. So, hey there, Sarge. Okay. So, the gold hoarders all, like, they are allowed to keep a cut of the treasure. However, most of it should go to Raffle, the gold hoarder. Um, thing is with Humphrey, he doesn't know that. He doesn't know, well, like, he doesn't know that the treasure he's allowed to keep shouldn't leave. Like, it's not technically his treasure. It's the gold hoarder's treasure. He's just allowed to keep some of it. Because gold kind of sustains the gold hoarders. So he's allowed to keep some of it with him, but he doesn't know this. He's been sending gold to the real world to pay for his wife's cancer. Um, and then his mentor is like, oh, shit, I'm going to get in trouble for this because you've been sending gold outside the Sea of Thieves. And, and Humphrey's like, okay. I was writing notes with the gold hoarder. I'll explain all the things that's happening. And it gets to the end of the comic, and it's this his wedding ring is golden. And he uses that to wrap up. Um, uh, I would just add it to him. Uh, he uses uh, the wedding ring to wrap up the letter that he sends to Rathbone instead of his payment. And Rathbone, when he gets this heartfelt letter, um, explaining from Humphrey, explaining, it might have to be here, I think it's Humphrey, yeah. um, explaining, like, hey, this is why I've been sending gold away, Rathbone uh, tears the letter away and just looks at the gold ring and he puts it in his pocket and he's like, fuck it, Humphrey, I'm gonna get that dude. <laughs> he, doesn't that even, he doesn't even read the letter. Uh, gold one goes, okay. He's a ruthless. The Bonds of Union, the Second Origins comic. This tells the origin of the Merchant's Alliance, which started with senior trader Molly. She established this thing. I thought so much. And she used, uh, she used to be a junior trader in the Grand Mercantile Union, who you'll recall from earlier. I think I mentioned them. <laughs> Maybe. Oh yeah, I know you took uh, they took down Humphrey. Yeah, they took down Humphrey, right. Um, so she used to be a member of the Grand Mercantile Union, and their whole thing, like, she was really good at conducting trades, and she like, because like, the Grand Mercantile Union, they have the agents on ships to like, sort of guide people through their voyages, and stuff like that. It was a big trading company in the real world. Uh, it still is, presumably. Um, Question. Uh, what do you mean, yes. presumably? When was it ever in the real world? What do you mean? Is it still around today? No, no, Grand Mercantile Union is entirely fiction. He presumably, said. presumably the GMU is still around in the in-game world, just like in the normal world outside, but we don't actually know because we haven't seen anything from the GMU like forever. Uh, originally they were being built up as this like big villain force that would come in, kind of like cut Rebecca in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Like with all of his ships and they- they, would they have powdered wigs? Uh, they did, yeah. 
Do that sick. Yeah. Okay, um, wait, 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 wait. All issues of June, yeah. Why do they wear powdered wigs? I actually just never got that. I there. actually don't know. Were they bald underneath, do you think? It was because and they just wanted to hide it because uh, they were really depressed about it? It was because high it's imperial happy. life was like, hey, yo, these wigs, right, this hairstyle makes us look bouncy, rich, exactly. and royal. And so they put on those fucking wigs because right. other people didn't want to do that. Right. They also did it in white because it was like, old people are wise and rich. And so they were like, yeah, well, I'm not old enough to have white hair, but I want to look white and rich. Okay, so, uh, GMU, she's basically, she's a really good trader, but in her words specifically, because she is a small brown woman, she's not getting promotions. <laughs> this sucks. This is a phrase that she repeats throughout the comic strip. She just keeps saying it in her head. Because she, like, each of the three original Origins comics were told, like, the main character is telling the story from their past. Um, and she keeps repeating, like in her head, uh, small brown woman, this phrase, like over and over again. Uh, it's kind of a meme in the comic, but yeah, it's, what she, it's what she says, basically. Um, so, yeah, uh, eventually she get, finally gets a promotion to junior trader. Um, and the guys there, they're like being all snide and shit. They're like, oh, yeah, we know that you have fucking a good track record. Um, also, we're going to send you on this big mission, uh, hopefully. If you really want, like, if you, they're like, if you really want to be one of the big guns, top notches, then we're sending you on this big mission to go to the Sea of Thieves because we want to fucking colonize that place. <laughs> Freedom nice. sucks. We're gonna kill all the pirates there and commence trade there. Nice. Um, and she's like, okay. Uh, so she goes and does that, and she's on the mission with two senior traders, and they're all on the flagship. And it's this huge armada of these giant galleons going to the Sea of Thieves. Uh, you guys probably know, I think I said earlier, that should know what happens when big ships try to go through the Devil's Shroud. It's not fucking good. Shroud just came out, 360 Shroud, he does, he 360 no too. So, the, Molly describes, like, they're approaching this big fog in the horizon, and there's this one pathway that goes through, and all of, like, Molly's like, should the ships go in single file? Because that would make fucking sense. And they're like, no, keep formation, they'll go straight through the fog. So Molly's ship, the flagship, is the only one that gets in this narrow passage. And all around her, she can hear the other ships getting torn apart and the crew members screaming as they fucking die. <laughs> Why would she not do single file? She wanted to, but the traders didn't. Oh, uh, the okay. traders like, no, no, yeah, it's, she's it's like too a slow. Or something, yeah, the senior traders uh, like, no, it's too, too fucking slow. Too fucking slow. Um, so yeah, and they basically all die except for one so ship. they sound like... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Molly's ship is the only one that makes it through, and there's two scenes of the flagship. Flagship's the only one that makes it through, and it's all battered, because even its, like, mast hit the shroud and sides hit the shroud, so it's, like, basically fucking sinking when they get there. And then the first thing they encounter is a pirate ship that sinks them. Nice. <laughs> so the pirate ship rolls up, takes all their loot, and then they go up to all the sailors, and they point uh, the guns, and they're like, you join us or you stay on the ship and you sink. Um, and all the sailors joined with the pirates. Okay. And so it just leaves Molly and the two senior traders uh, on the ship. And she detaches the last remaining uh, wreck boat, um, lifeboat. And she, like, rows them as these two fucking old men are, like, fucking just out of their minds. Like, oh shit, all the ships sunk. And she basically rows them over to this island and basically sets them up. Like, she gets them over the campfire and everything. They go to bed. And then in the morning, she wakes up and sees that the fucking rowboat is gone. And the senior traders have left with all the food supply and basically fucked over Molly on this one. Aww. Um, but then a uh, brigantine crew shows up. That's these two pirate ships. And they show up on the island and they're like, hey, um, we noticed that you're kind of a marine here. Would you like to be part of the crew? And she's like, yeah, fine, why not? So she joins up with this crew for a life of piracy. Um, and they go to this outpost. And they're just drinking there one night. And all of a sudden, Molly recognizes some of the sailors from her old crew walk in the tavern. She's like, oh, my God, so I'm going to go check something out. And sure as shit, the galley that sunk them is out there. And all the crew's, like, offshore for shore leave. They're drinking and, and boozing. Uh, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So she goes she goes there, and she's like, all right, uh, we were carrying big shipments on that ship, and I don't think they've had enough time to turn them in yet. So I steal all this shit. So basically, as the two pirate girls are like on the ship, stealing the stuff and getting back to the brig, one of the senior traders uh, comes up to Molly. Um, he's like, oh, Molly, hey, <laughs> funny seeing you here. We thought you died. Actually, we just, we just worked out a deal with these lovely fellows that own the scaling game. We're going to get our stuff back on time if we give them a cup of the gold. 
And Molly's like, well, can't have you telling them about this. And she, she fucking shoots him in the head. <laughs> she pulls out a flintlock and she shoots her old boss in the head. And they sail away and they establish the Merchant's Alliance. They get the goods to the guy that ordered them. He's like, oh, you're a reliable uh, source. And they're like, yeah, uh, we're the Merchant Alliance. And we're pretty much cool and we're, they're the new trade. I hate the market alliance. Two, two trading companies so far. All I do is make you deliver pigs. Fine, mission pigs. Um, so, the Order of Souls is basically, right now, it's like a little girl's cult. Um, <laughs> and oh, the yeah. Cult. It's like these chicks, like these three teenage chicks that have no idea what they're doing. They just know they have weird special powers. And the names are Olivia, Ozan, and Alina. And Olivia's the most important one. Because so so as they're convening this little witch's coven, um, <laughs> the coven, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> the coven, the like, coven. Okay. Ozan has this little secret she brought. Like I mean, this is something like, oh, please don't let it be another dead cat like last time. Ozan. <laughs> what? Apparently, Ozan likes bringing dead cats. Do they sit there and go, bubble, bubble, toy in they trouble? Do, they do. Yo. Anyway, Ozan reveals it. She pulls it back, and it's a skull. It's the shining skull that she found. And she's like, look at it. It's fucking weird and mystical, right? And, oh, and fucking, um, oh my god. Uh, she's over here, Olivia. She's the only one that wrote down over here. Olivia, she sees that shit, and she gets fucking visions of the future. And she sees the Sea of Thieves and how to get there and all this shit. All this information just, just gets in her mind like she's decoding from a fucking computer or something. And she's like, oh, I know what we gotta do. And she fucking, she fucking like pick, basically picks up the skull, absorbs its memories, um, and basically she tells the girls, this place called the Sea of Thieves, we're gonna go there and we're gonna do what she's there. Because <laughs> I've seen the future. Pog. So the commandeer a vessel, like, um, uh, Olivia absorbs the memories of an old sailor that was buried like near their hometown. She absorbs his memories so they all know how, they, they all three of them absorb his memories, so they all know how to pilot a ship. Um, and they get the, uh, uh, they, they also absorb the memories of some dead guy that knew a lot about the shipwright and knew some of his secrets, I think. So they blackmail the shipwright and giving them a ship uh, for free, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, and they sail into the Sea of Thieves and they set up the Order of Souls which are a faction, there are now to say there are skeletons quite frequently in the sea. Skeletons are basically cursed pirates um, that are not allowed to return to life. Actually, returning to life is not even a thing yet, so I shouldn't say that. Um, yeah, they were not allowed to return to, return to life. Uh, so they're just these skeletons that were cursed with gold and they're walking around. And the Order of Souls sends out bounties for these skeletal pirate heads and they will absorb the memories of these pirates. And then they'll give the memories, like they transcribe the memories on the parchment and maps and stuff, and they'll give these memories, these transcribed memories to the gold workers. And they will, these maps, they're like the riddles in the game. And, oh, they, okay. and they lead to the, uh, to the treasure that the guy was hiding, basically. All right. So there's a bit of an uh, economy going on here between the Order of Souls and the gold workers right now. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's Madame Olivia, she's pretty important, founder of the Order of Souls. Next guy, we come to this British explorer, this British gentleman, named Sir Arthur Pendragon, and he comes from the outside world. Uh, and Arthur here, oh shit, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm a little ahead. Okay, Flameheart Senior. <laughs> this, this is kind of Flameheart Senior. Flameheart Senior is a, he starts traveling to the Sea of Thieves around his own. And he makes a lot of gold here, he travels back and forth to establish a huge estate. He's got an adopted son whose parents like died a long time ago and he adopted his, their son, and he's Flameheart Jr. And he basically raises Flameheart Jr. to have the best schooling. He's got all this education and all this, like he's really good with the sword because of like the universities he went through. He probably went to uh, Chimkin University. You know, okay. Because yeah. we're really good at- uh, High sword esteem. Okay. Yeah, high esteem university. Yeah, there's quite a few sword <coughs> I don't know how to use my sword. Yeah, there's just one sword tag to this. Uh, it's technically, it's, yeah, it's technically forbidden because it's cheating. Technically, yeah. Yeah, so we don't allow it, and if you do, then uh, I'll fucking good. use it on you. I'll pierce your dumbass fucking head. <laughs> so yeah, Flameheart is a deckhand on the Burning Blade. He's a deckhand. <laughs> deckhand. 
Uh, pretty, pretty ironic that his name is Flameheart and he's on the ship called the Viking Fleet. It just fate works out that way. And his captain is never named. Uh, well, they do give him a name. They just call him the Captain, like with yeah. like Cap apostrophe N. They call him the Captain. Um, and we don't know who this guy is. Cap's his Captain. We don't really know who this Captain is, but he is he is important. He's important. Um, anyway. All you guys need to know right now is that sometime Flameheart overthrows the captain and he overtakes the burning blade and makes it his own ship and the captain goes off, butts off somewhere. So, <laughs> uh, back to Sir Arthur Pendragon. Woo! My <laughs> man. My man, my favorite character in all the lore, Sir Arthur Pendragon. Uh, he's this British explorer. And he comes from this rich British family, and he's known for like adventures against mystical foes and adversaries. Um, he's like he's this is a character who is from a video game series called the Pendragon series that Rare used to do in the nineties, and it didn't make a lot of money. But basically, the first one was all about like this old haunted castle that Pendragon went to. Second one was about mummies and stuff, and the third one's called Black Witch, which I'm gonna play later. Um, so yeah, the British Navy recognizes this. British Navy recognizes how good Pendragon is at doing all this stuff. And they give him, like, uh, they give him, first of all, a title. So they, they give him knighthood, I'm pretty sure. That's why it's called Sir Arthur Pendragon. Uh, second of all, they give him a ship and a crew to just go around and do mystery and adventure. But he finds out very quickly that most of the stuff he's doing nowadays, like, he hears, he hears tales of a monster just coming and, and wrecking shit up, and he gets there and it's just like a big crocodile or something. Or he hears tales of strange magic in the wilderness, and he gets there and just a tribe of natives just doing their thing. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, Pendragon, like discovering all these like cultures hidden throughout the world, uh, leads the British army. Basically, he is unwillingly an instrument in colonization. Hey. And the British, the British, <laughs> the British, <laughs> the British Navy uses his, uh, basically, his esteemed, like, voyages, they use him so that they can go and colonize native tribes all over the place. Saw and that a moment. Yeah, and basically Pendragon's depressed about this. He's like, I don't want to do this. What an L. Speaking yeah. of Pendragon. A bit of an L. A bit of an L for our boy. Me, me, whatever. Me, you know, like, um, I actually help. Anyway, <laughs> he's got the sort of Alfred figure, who's just called Ockety in the, in the comics. Um, this is, they were on the Champion of Souls comics, by the way. Again, both free, only two issues right now. I believe there's a third one coming out next year. Um, but the two that we have right now tell a pretty complete story. So, uh, bas basically, this dude, uh, Pendragon, uh, Pocket, like Pocket, he tells Pendragon, all right, one last story. Um, there was this, uh, there was this pirate back in my day, back in the war. And he basically hated both sides, and he was his own guy. But he hated the Empire less than the enemy, so they hired this pirate, and his name was uh, Cavendish, uh, Richard Cavendish. And he was the captain of the ship called the Black Witch. And it's just off the coast of this old island that Pocket used to know about called Dragon Skull Isle. So Pendragon, uh, he, he isn't sent there by the British Navy, he goes to investigate by himself. And they get to the coast of Dragon Skull Isle, and they see the Black Witch. It's like this ghostly ship, and there's phantoms and shit. And so Pendragon's like, "Don't you worry, boys. I'm gonna go over there by myself. I'm gonna go over there by myself. Get the ship out of range. Just stay safe." And Pendragon goes over there, and he's just killing phantoms and ghosts left and right. My man. He's slaying all these monsters, and and, and he's just he's just fucking up everything. And he gets to the captain's quarter, where he learns that Richard Cavendish, his soul is like trapped in them. Um, so he reads Cavendish's journals, figures out how to do the reverse ritual, and figures out how to free Cavendish. And Cavendish is like, cool, dude, uh, you can have my ship, because I'm a ghost now, and I don't really need it anymore. So you have my ship, um, and I was actually, if you check this out, check this out. And he shows uh, Pendragon a map of the Sea of Beasts. I was going here, uh, but we got that sort of fucked up. Uh, I don't think it actually explained like, what happened to the Black Witch, but they got messed up, basically, as they were going to the Sea of Thieves. And actually, no, they, as they were coming back from the Sea of Thieves, because Cavendish did actually get to the Sea of Thieves, and he raised a kid there. He raised his daughter in the Sea of Thieves. 
<laughs> he daughter. Ran, yeah, he raised his daughter in the Sea of Thieves, and he was like, Pendragon, if you ever come across this woman, and he shows like a little picture of a little girl, which is cool. Mm -hmm. he should, uh, he's like, this is a painting of my little girl. Uh, make her the captain of the Black Witch when you pass away, basically. Um, so Pendragon agrees, he's like, if I see your daughter, I will sign her on the crew, and I'll make her captain when I die. Or when I leave, you know, whatever. Um, and basically what happens is his old ship, like he sails up to his old ship, he's like, hey boys, I did it! And they're like, woo! And basically he gives all the sailors, all his old crew a choice. He's like, you stay on the Black Witch with me, and we go to the Sea of Thieves and get treasure. Or you can just sail back home and give this letter to Hockaby to tell him where they've been. And his crew basically gets split up half and half. Half stay on the Black Witch, half go on back home. Um, and they get to the Sea of Thieves. They get to the Sea of Thieves. And the first thing, it's a bit of a running theme, actually. The first thing they encounter when they get to the Sea of Thieves is a bit of a, a bit of a fucking uh, doozy. They see the crack in one eye. He's under the ground. He doesn't emerge from the sea anymore because the last time he did, his eye got botched. So basically, one eye just sort of he's attacking. He's the he's expelled ink around the ship, and the ship can't move too well. Mm -hmm. So he's attacking the ship. And uh, Pendragon's like, get me in there, boys. We're going to help all these pirates. And they do, and they save the day. And they make like a bit of an alliance with these guys, because they save them. Uh, alliance? Yeah, <laughs> a bit of an alliance. I think uh, Pendragon would get along with them. So they have a I don't think for the heart. Sorry. Um, I'll just cut this bit out. <laughs> OK, so. So he makes an alliance uh, with these pirates that he saved. And they go to this outpost that's on fire. Uh, oh, after a few the months, the alliance drawer? shows up there. No, it's just an outpost that is currently blazing <laughs> right now. <laughs> but, um, 420 post. Yeah, yeah, sort of like that. And they go there, and they're like, look for survivors, quickly. we got to salvage the ruins. And Pendragon, the only survivor is this barmaid from the outpost's tavern. And she basically says, there were skeletons in a burning ship, and they came here and they killed everyone. I only survived because a skeleton was coming at me, but the building landed on me, and you couldn't get to me. Nice. So that's the only reason uh, she was able to survive. And Pendragon and his crew are all like, well, what did this? What could possibly have done this? You know, what, what could have been so powerful? Skeletons? And like, we know skeletons exist, but like, they're this big? You know? Hey. They attack outposts now? This is new. This is a new thing. Uh, Captain Dex Barrel, I'll save you two. Almost there. Alright. Give the same to you two. How long do we have to go? How long, how long do we have left? Uh, um, all of this. I'll be able to get through this a lot faster than all of this. So I. Mm. Okay. So yeah. We're about know. halfway through. I don't know how much longer you have on this. <laughs> I know. We have another SD card that we can use. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, just stay on. Yeah, stay yeah. Sure it doesn't work. I'm waiting for it right now. So. How long has the cover been going on us? No, no, each SD card has an hour and 40 minutes. minutes. Okay. Well, so this one had 45 minutes earlier. Yeah, yeah, you were like, you were got to say, it's been about 30 minutes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I talked uh, earlier when I waited for it. So, yeah. Uh, they go in, uh, and they're basically like, okay, what the hell's happening? We have to stop this before it happens next time, because they figure this might be a trend. And so they're going around all of these outposts, and they manage to uh, get there early on in the attack. Or I think they manage to arrive to an outpost before the attack happens. And like the lady said, this burning ship basically pulls up to the island. All these skeletons hop off, and they go start killing things. But uh, the Pendragon's alliance manages to fight them off. And they encounter what is known as an Ashen Lord. An Ashen Lord, like the Gold Hoarder, is a skeleton lord. An Ashen Lord is a a uh, skeleton lord, skeleton lords sort of have power over other skeletons, uh, but ashen lords specifically have the ability to control like fire in the elements. They can call in meteor swarms, their skulls are like flamethrowers, like they're pretty cool. And he meets this ashen lord called Captain Grimm, who is one of Flameheart's new generals. Because Flameheart turned himself into the most powerful ashen lord, and he turned his uh, four closest uh, uh, people, Old Horatio, Captain Grimm, Red Ruth and Warden She, he turned the four of them into Ashen Lords as well and made them wreaking havoc all over the Sea of Thieves. 
Pendragon defeats Captain Grimm with his crew. And then Madame Olivia, she's like, she's been watching events from the background because um, she knows what's happening. She, she's aware of all this shit because she's kind of on mission a little bit. Um, so she knows what's happening. She's like, I got to move to Pendragon, though. It kind of sounds hot. Question. Do yeah. they have the sex? No, they can't. It's implied that they do both. Yo! <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So Madame Olivia calls up Pendragon. It specifically says, like, when Pendragon, when Pendragon sees Madame Olivia, he's monologuing about, like, you know, he never had a wife because he just never found a woman who was able to hold his interests. No! But fucking, he gets into Madame, he gets into fucking Madame Olivia's, like, goth girl workshop, and he sees her there, and she's like, ooh. <laughs> 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 like, 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 his soul fucking gets sucked Dude, out of him right there. He's like, she makes tea the exact way he likes tea, and he's like, we've never met before, how the fuck do you know that? And she's like, I don't know, I'm a bitch. Um, <laughs> so yeah, he sort of has a big part of him. That's very, he goes like, do you know what I'm thinking right now? And she's, <laughs> she's like, like yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. I'm a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, <laughs> and basically, she's like, all right. So while your alliance is out there raging war against Flameheart and his cronies, I'm gonna yeah. have you. You're gonna be my champion of souls. And she gives she gives him this sword, which is a really cool sword. It's called the Sword of Souls. Mm-hmm. And she opens it. She's like, I've been working on this for like three months. And it's this. It's kind of like a lightsaber. It's got like this black hilt mm-hmm. with a blue gem in it. And then the blade itself is this nice misty blue. And the Sword of Souls is actually a cosmetic in the game that you get rewarded for completing one of the tall tales later. And it's really cool. I have it. I know. It's really fucking amazing. I want it. Uh, you can get it. It's pretty easy. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Uh, check camera. How are you doing? It's good. Ooh, editing a picture. You just got to your next clip. All right. Look how I got this last one. This is really All right. Well, next clip. So. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. He's the champion of souls now, and his job is to go on free souls across the Sea of Thieves, including the souls of skeletons. And so he goes around, whenever you kill skeletons, he's creating their souls, and he's basically the top bounty hunter for the Order of Souls. During this time, though, his alliance is still waging war against Flameheart, and they're taking out multiple Ashen Lords now. They're, they're struggling, though. Because you got to think, every time someone dies, that's another soldier Flameheart gets, theoretically. That's another skeleton that comes back from the dead. So this guy named the Fairy Man. We don't know his name before. He just is yeah, right. now called oh, the Fairy Man. Oh, and he goes to Marauder's Arch and he s- commits suicide to go to the Sea of the Damned. Sea of the Damned is the afterlife. Sea of Thieves has an afterlife. It's called the Sea of the Damned. And it's basically a dark reflection of the real world. And the Fairy Man goes down there. He did some ritual, though, where he became the captain of a ship called the Fairy Man. And this is the vessel. Whenever you die in Sea of Thieves, you end up on the Ferry of the Damned. And you have to wait like a, a 30 seconds or so before you can respawn. Um, in reality, whenever you die in the war and you go to the Sea of the Damned, it could take months before you get to the Ferry of the Damned. But whenever you come back, it's like just a few minutes after you left, basically. So that's how the Ferry of the Damned worked. And the ferryman did this because he realized Flameheart was going to win this war eventually. But now, whenever a pirate dies, they just come back and keep fucking fighting. And Flameheart's really annoyed by this. Flameheart does die, and his old man, Old Horatio, which is one of the Ashen Lords, he buries, uh, he buries Flameheart, and then he, it's said that Old Horatio parts the shroud just by a simple glare and sails the burning blade out, not to be seen for any other readers. Nah. Um, Yo, so you're telling me that the Flame Heart and all the Flame Ashen Warriors are able to control the Shroud? Old Horatio at least is. I don't know about the others, but Old Horatio is for some reason. Is he like Twitch chat and donated a lot and the Shroud was like, bro? I think so. Uh, How are we doing over there on the camera? It's good. Way two minutes and 55 seconds into this clip. So I was editing a picture. Um, You'll probably just have to stick on it just to make sure. Okay, so uh, also okay. I should say during this time, the burning blade uh, kills the Mad Kaiser. Uh, the Mad Kaiser is dead for good at this point. We don't know if Ramsey was actually the captain of it right now, but this comes into play later where we learn the Mad Kaiser is finally been destroyed. Um, and it was carrying an artifact called the Shroud Breaker, 
which was, it's one of many artifacts of the ancient slave that could actually part the shroud. Yeah, we Why didn't the ancients just use the shroud breaker to keep the shroud from killing them so they didn't have to go to Tricky Peak, Drew? I don't fucking know. They didn't know. <laughs> I, I know how. I know why. So, they didn't know how to. They, they had to learn, and it was it was in beta. It was, it was, it was new beta. technology. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, technology. It was. It was in like beta. It was like a yeah. beta clan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beta. Shroud breakers are devices <laughs> that can basically break the shroud. They're like little turtle guys. Okay. But yeah. Uh, the magpies, we basically threw it overboard before the burning would get them, and it's at the, at the, near some coastal island somewhere. Um, okay, so pit dragons going around killing all these skeletons, uh, freeing their souls, and eventually he dies, because he's sent to uh, find this specific skeleton, and the skeleton lord, I think it is, or it might just be an old captain, he's hiding out in caverns beneath the water. So Pendragon goes down, and he's swimming down there, trying to find this guy, and there's these multiple caverns in the water near the island. And Pendragon describes that he's down there for hours. It doesn't ever show him finding a pocket of air. I think Pendragon just holds his breath for fucking hours. They don't really explain I believe it. I believe it at this point. Anyway, yeah, Pendragon fucking dies, and he goes to the ferry for dinner. From drowning? From drowning, yes. Bruh! No! Um, and he goes to the ferryman, he's like, where am I? And he's like, you're in hell, buddy, but don't worry, you're going to be back up there soon. Uh, first of all, uh, here's the Well of Fates. Uh, I need you to find its replica in the real world. The Well of Fates is like a lantern that, when shown, it can like show the souls of the dearly, the dearly departed. And Pendragon can use the lantern to free them as well. So uh, he gets sent back to the real world. He goes to Madame Olivia. He's like, Madame Olivia! Uh, well, I need to find the Well of Fates in real life. <laughs> no, not a prank. Um, and she basically guides him to it. It's in this old ancient location. Uh, and he uses it to free more souls. So anyway, yeah, Pendragon's going around doing all this stuff. And he also says to Madame Olivia, he's like, all right, I do love uh, doing all this like bounty stuff for the Order of Souls. You know, it sounds good, you guys. However, I'm going to need to recruit a team of teenagers without a tear. <laughs> Nah. So he gets his own crew. Uh, he gets his own crew. Uh, there are three other people that sail on the Black Witch. He sail on the Black Witch with him now. They're called uh, uh, Dunn and Rodriguez are the first two guys. Um, and they're just cool dudes. We don't know too much about them. <laughs> Dunn and Rodriguez moment. Uh, yeah, Dunn and Rodriguez. And Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow's like, and Anna, uh, he meets this girl called Anna Kavinich, and and he's like, oh my God, that's Richard's uh, daughter. That, that, he sent me here to find her all these months ago. Yeah. And Madame Olivia, like his <laughs> pin dragon, sort of like, wow, such a coincidence. And he looks at Madame Olivia and he's like, tee hee hee, <laughs> like like she sort of orchestrated. She sort of orchestrated it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so so yeah, uh, Flameheart. At this point, Flameheart Senior has been dealt with. Um, basically, the status quo of the Sea of Thieves is no one can really die. There's not really too many consequences for dying. And also, skeletons are a big threat <laughs> still. Even after, because Flameheart helped out a lot with skeletons. So the next big skeleton lord is a man named Grey Marrow. Do you guys remember Grey Marrow from earlier? From the Phoenix Fortnite part one? He's back, and he's a skeleton lord. And he's wreaking havoc on the Sea of Thieves, so Pendragon is sent to kill him with the Black Witch and his crew. And they do a pretty good job. Like, they batter down Grey Marrow's ship. He's basically sinking, uh, but then Grey Marrow somehow takes command of the tides and causes the Black Witch to shipwreck on, ironically, an island called Shipwreck Bay. And so the, the Black Witch is just basically broken up here. She's salvaged. And Grey Marrow goes up like, <laughs> he's basically just having like this villainous monologue. Um, then he forces Pendragon to teach him the ritual for trapping souls and objects. And then he does it to Pendragon. He drops, he traps Pendragon's soul in a painting of himself. No! And then he drops, he traps Don Rodriguez and Anna in this chest, this cursed chest, uh, which we'll return later. And basically, Grey Marrow sort of won. Um, that is where the second Champion of Souls uh, issue ends off. 
Um, well, yes, we do see Pendragon in the game, but we don't know what happened directly after Champion of Souls 2. It'll probably come out either next year or within a few months. Oh, and uh, uh, remember, all the Origins comics are free. They're really cool. Mm. Anyway, shout out to your sponsors. <laughs> Right, yeah, so Graham Monroe, he now uses his uh, knowledge to, cra uh, to trap souls. He uses this to take revenge on the crew of the Morningstar. You know, Eli Slate uh, and his crew, who are Fontaine, another dude, and a chick. <laughs> um, yeah, Fontaine, Dinger, and a deckhand named Sandra. Um, and they're the new crew of the Morningstar, but... Sandra like flies overboard and she basically escapes from the battle, whereas um, Fontaine, Dinger, and Eli Slate, all of their souls were trapped on Old Faith Belial. No! Grey Marrow kind of wins here. <laughs> it kind of sucks. Grey Marrow just kind of wins here. Anyway, that's the end of the Origins arc. Any questions? Uh, Catherine, when? Uh, um, in, uh, 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 all right, Venus Fortnite Part 2. <laughs> Venus Fortnite Part 2. So, uh, it, it begins with this uh, tall, lanky girl named Lorena waking up in a tavern on Sanctuary Outpost. And she found this message in a bottle in her hometown that said, it was, the, it was a map to the Sea of Thieves, and then on the back it said, Seek Athena's Fortune. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so, Lorena, basically, she stows away to the uh, Sea of Thieves on this merchant vessel. And when she gets there, she's like, oh shit, I'm broke because I was robbed and I fell asleep in the tavern. And uh, probably not a good idea to fall asleep in the tavern the entire time around. That's all I'm saying. A lot worse could happen, to be fair. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she basically gets robbed. So she sets up a makeshift banana stand on the outpost and forces sailors to buy her bananas so she gets a little money. And then that she meets- like prostitution. Uh, it should have been that, but the book was PG-13. Man, this no. Sucks. Yeah. no. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, Lorena meets up with these sailors called Little Ned and Faisal. Little Ned's this big guy, and Faisal's this little little, little guy with like kind of fat, kind of but beard. He's kind of he's kind of a smart dude. He just he's just looks like this. He's kind of a Russian guy. Um, That's weird. <laughs> he's really he's just like this really keen like he he's like this satirical guy. And he always, he always finds a joke or something, Faisal. And his brother's little Ned. And they're basically <laughs> arguing about which voyage I should go on. Faisal's like, Merchant Alliance, it's boring, but it's safe. And little Ned's like, I don't want to go on a boat with it. <laughs> I don't want to go on a boat So Lorena's like, hey, uh, I'll decide what voyage we sail on, because I'm going to put myself on your crew. And uh, Faisal's like, mm, uh, we talked with Captain Harry Pike first. Can we, first of all, go buy yourself a sword. Uh, second of all, we go we go talk to Captain Hydrogen. Go old Captain Hydrogen, Hydrogen Peroxide. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so they get to the ship. The ship is called the Unforgiven. Uh, it's a galleon class ship, and they're basically on there. And Fives was like saying, "Oh yeah, Adelheid will be back soon." And Adelheid, she finally shows up, and she's like. Fucking doing bar parkour on some rooftops on the outpost. Oh, because yeah. there's these kids below that like she stole money from and they're running after her, like shooting at her. She gets back to the ship and like blows them up with the cannon. <laughs> anyway, Captain Alhide, she's the short black woman, uh, kind of badass, and she reveals that uh, her crew has been blacklisted from the Order of Souls because their last voyage fell through. So she gets Lorena to go in there, and Lorena like acts like she's a green, well she is a greenie, but she acts like she's a hardened sailor to go and get a voyage from the Order of Souls. And they give it to her, and the voyage is to hunt down Steel Isinian, who's a skeletal captain that Adelheid actually used to serve as a deckhand to. Oh. Um, so they go hunt down Steel Isinian. He's called Steel Isinian because there's a metal eye patch bolted into his skull. Yeah, he's a skeleton now, and Lorena's like, skeletons exist, <laughs> and Adelheid's like, he's up again. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they basically get this skull back to the Order of Souls, and Alphine, like stops her outside. Oh, and I should mention at this point, there were two Order of Souls stowaways on the Unforgiven that Little Ned and Faisal discovered, um, and they, were, they threw them out, and nothing but their own defenses, <laughs> um, because like they were spying on them. But yeah, that, that's important, it gets to pay off. Um, so yeah, so yeah, uh, Alphine's like, you go in there, convince the Order of Souls to give us the parchment 
that they extract from this guy's memories instead of the payment. So Lorena goes in there and she tries to do that to the madam there, um, but madam's not falling for it. She's like, no, this part of the to someone. Someone else wants it. Um, and then, well, like formaldehyde, am I right, fellas? And then uh, two of the Order of Souls lackeys that are surrounding the madam, they're like taking off their hoods. It's like this fucking, uh, it's like this, uh, um, a battle of Geonosis moment where they take out their hood and it's it's Faisal and Adel by them uh, because they stole the garments from the guys earlier. They've been a, the, they were imposters. They were a little that suspicious. Kind of so. um, I, I, they, they beat her up and they take the scroll and run. Good. <laughs> and the scroll leads them to an island called Tribute Peak. They made um, some on stuff. Yeah. As they're sailing to Tribute Peak, they get attacked by another ship called the Black Gauntlet. Lorena manages to conduct a plan where fi or little Ned has this mirror and uses it to direct heat onto the powder barrels. So they blow up, but they get a good, like, they get a lot of holes in the Unforgiven. So the Unforgiven sinking when it falls into Thieves' Haven. Uh, that's when uh, they repair the ship there, and I think Faisal, no, it's little Ned and Lorena discover the workshop that Shan left behind, and they're like, "Ooh, this guy made cannons that shot people out." And Faisal was like, "Oh, that design just became popular." He's like, "Ha ha." ha. This gives the an idea because they, they go on the outside of Thieves' Haven and they realize the Black Gauntlet is coming their way. It didn't sink, it was just delayed. Okay. So the Black Gauntlet is coming their way, and the Rena's, they found a chest of sorrow on the island. And the Rena, kind of like Shan did earlier, centuries or not centuries, but decades maybe, mm -hmm. maybe two decades earlier, um, the Rena's like, I'm going to shoot myself on board the, the Black Gauntlet. I'm going to put this chest in the captain's quarters, I'm gonna lock all the doors and put the keys in the water so that the ship sinks from the chest of sorrow. And it does, and everyone's like, woo, Lorena, you did it. And she swims back. The Unforgiven gets to Tribute Peak. They find another crew already there. Uh, they basically wipe out that crew, and they're like, fuck you kids. <laughs> um, uh, then they go down, they solve a couple puzzles on the, uh, they solve a couple puzzles on the underground. They finally get to Rathbone's lair with all the schools there. And Rathbone, through this long fight, uh, Rathbone ends up driving his shovel right through Adelheid's heart. And as far as Lorena knows, Adelheid is dead and won't be coming back because she doesn't know how to carry it again. Um, so yeah, uh, Adelheid dies. Lorena gets separated, uh, but she manages to trick the Gold Hoarder and he falls down this big chasm. Um, Bro, my main man, the Gold Hoarder? Yeah, Rathbone, he falls down this big chasm and he hasn't been heard like from... Since Dude, he's just getting dunked on left and Basically, right. Basically, yeah. It's like the second time he's died at this point. Um, anyway, they sail back. Um, Lorena has to commandeer the vessel that was already there because the, uh, the Unforgiven had already left. Faisal and Ned got out of there because they thought Lorena was dead, too. Um, and then Lorena sails this galleon away. She finds the Unforgiven parked at an island. She crashes this galleon into the island. It's like, hey, guys, I made it. Um, they're like, ooh, Lorena's back. And they, Lorena's like lamenting Adelheid's death. And little Ned's like, hey, Faisal, I don't think she knows about to carry it again. So Faisal explains, Lorena, or, yeah, Faisal explains Adelheid can't really die. I think he died a few hours, maybe. Um, Me right now. Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yo, we got right. it. Uh, so they basically, they spend their time partying on an outpost. And when everyone goes to sleep in the outpost, like they're spreading their gold around, Lorena tells the story of defeating the gold hoarder. Woo, hooray! When Lorena, uh, also, Lorena took a ring from the gold hoarder. Uh, she took like this black pearl ring, which we used to be part of the skeleton piece. It used to be like what held them together, basically. Okay. Um, and she hears this music uh, sort of coming uh, that wakes her up, like this enchanted sort of music. And she hears stones rumbling. All right, so this is the 12 minute song? All right, I got enough time to finish this one. Right. I got one more minute. So, uh, basically, Lorena goes down to the secret passageway. She sees the tavern of Venus Fortune, and she meets Ramsey there. Ramsey's a ghost now. It's unexplained how exactly Ramsey became a ghost. He just said, I found ways to circumvent death, and now I'm the pirate lord, and I'm still here, and I'm cool. And also, you're cool, Lorena, and thanks for being here. And then Lorena gives him the ring, and he's like, oh, for a wedding ring, Lorena. Thank you for returning that to me. Whoa, that's such a cool um, And then as Lorena's walking away, she turns back to Ramsey. She's like, this place, why is it called the Athena's Fortune? And he says, because my wife was named Athena. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, that, is, oh, all right, that is the end of the part two. Any questions? Dude, what the Dog, we got about... Yeah. 
20 seconds. All right, I'm going to bed. All right, all right. Come on. Come on. Tales from the Sea of Thieves, shortest book, realistically. What do you got stuff to do, Chris? What are you up to? No. Okay. I want to steal it. Um, Tales from the Sea of Thieves, so I've read, I've read every book, every comic. I've done all the tall tales, so 100% of them. I am the foremost knowledgeable person on Sea of Thieves ever. Uh, I've watched Falcon. every Captain Falcor video. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Then yeah. <laughs> you, it, Oh, it's too dark. It's now. gone. <laughs> he used pitch black. That's, right. yeah, I'm kind of that's, all, that's, all right. that's too. That's still too dark. We got a pop working studio. Oh, it's all right. I think the light in, light in the back here was pretty good. Uh, I can't do it. Yeah, and then the one that was on over there. I was going to start, work. but I quit it because it was Yeah, Tales it's not, it's not the Thieves. worst thing ever. Tales from the Sea of Thieves is the official war book for Sea of Thieves. Is that the Tall Tales uh, game? No. Tales from the Sea of Thieves? <laughs> Tales, Tales of the Border? Tales from the Sea of Thieves is a Border. journal written by Flameheart Jr. You remember Flameheart Sr. had an adopted son. I just got tagged. <laughs> Flameheart Jr. had an adopted son. He wasn't named Flameheart. Flameheart adopted him and he was like, uh, your parents died and I see you. I adopted you. Uh, you don't need to know what they died from. So it's all right. What did they <laughs> die from? Only did they die from me. What did they die from? What did they die from? Yeah. I don't know. It's I'm not guessing like, it's Flameheart. Too much sex. Probably that, probably that. Let's go. I, uh, all right. I'm going to spend, spend years going to college to join the rare team just so I can put in the lore to the service of the sex. You get a writing degree, Wait, right? Wait, can you actually you go to die from a writing team? team? Yeah. Probably. All right. Hey, Sean, I'm not going to do both. Glenn Hart Jr. is adopted. This journal, uh, Tales of the Sea the journal written by him, and it's annotated by three characters called Diving Bell, Half a Stew Jean, and uh, Nine Cat and Laura. And it's sort of weird because as you're reading the book, it's like half of it's Flameheart's journal, half of it's Diving Bell's journal. And Diving Bell and Nine Cat and Bureau, they like write in different styles. So they'll like write to each other in the journal and have little conversations in the journal. And it's like, why aren't you just saying this shit to each other? Because well, you're presumably very close, right? All right, here's the thing, right? My theory is, is that they leave the journal around. So that way it's like, oh, I want to talk to them. But they're not here right now, so maybe I can just write this down real quick, and then they'll come that. back and they can write their response in the journal. And could they have a thing, Jack? Uh, six point four. I trust them. I trust them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I said soon all the way back here, but no, he it's is not he a <laughs> self-proclaimed uh, expert, expert in C of Thieves. The only expert in C of Thieves. That's not true. I played <laughs> since day one. Uh, I just didn't care about the lore. <laughs> <laughs> so. Journal is written by Frank Park Jr., at least half of it. He finds an ancient coin. Or he basically has delusions of grand because he, his poppy, he doesn't know that his poppy turned evil poppy. and basically destroyed the sea of thieves, brought it to his knees. My name he just knows his, pirate, his father was a very like prestigious pirate who did a lot of cool stuff. And he's like, I want to be just like my daddy. I don't get it, be just like my father. So he has delusions of grand about this. Then one night, he's like, oh, I'll never get to the sea of thieves. I'm not a pirate. I don't have the gold for that. Even though he does have the gold for it. He's like, I don't have the like, I, don't, I don't have the charisma to recruit a crew. But he finds an ancient coin left behind by his father, like around the fireplace. Mm. Ancient coins are the rarest material in the Sea of Thieves, rarer than gold, rarer than doubloons. Um, and, and an ancient coin is basically, it's less of a currency. Right now it's less of a currency. It becomes a currency later on. <laughs> right now it's less of a currency, and it's like a symbol of trust. If you give someone an ancient coin over a promise, it's like stronger than a pinky promise you. Oh, it's right. stronger than a pinky promise if you give someone an ancient Dude. Oh, I always do pinky promise. So, uh, Flameheart Jr. finds a sailor named Isidro, and he gives Isidro the ancient coin, and he's like, Find me a crew, you may be. <laughs> and uh, he basically unites the crew. Uh, we learn Imagine about being Isidro, right? Being like, Holy shit! <laughs> exactly. We learn about two of the crew members the uh, bosun is named Red Ruzi. Uh, Red Rosie, and I think the other dude's named like Jim Bob or something stupid. Jim Bob. <laughs> um, Jim. But yeah, he gets this coin, and they they commandeer the or they buy the vessel, the Silver Blade, which is ironically named the Silver Blade. His dad's ship was named the Burning Blade. It just works. Okay, it just <laughs> it's works. like poetry, it rhymes. <laughs> uh, Morning. They go to the Sea of Thieves. And right away, when they get to their first outpost, presumably Galleon's Grave outpost, I think, they get there, and they meet this gold hoarder, he's like, I've got a special voyage for you, lads, I'm the same way you're going to get gold. 
And then they're approached by this mysterious old woman, Flameheart Three Hills, and it's like, Ooh, I know a secret hiding location of an ancient cursed chest that you may find. Uh, and, and I wish you to go and find it yet. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, he's talking to the cedar about it, saying, Okay, do I choose Voyage or do I know I'll get me gold? Or do I choose the fucking risky one? And the cedar's like, Risky one. It's fucking well. All the way. <laughs> nothing ventured, nothing gained. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, so yeah, they go out on this voyage, and they see all this cool shit around. Um, his crew actually makes the Becalm Shanty, which is one of the famous shanties in the game. It's the slower one. Uh, um, and all of the shanties, by the way, all, sucks. all of the shanties in the game, uh, Bosun Bill, Grod Nails, and uh, Becalm, they are original shanties that were written for Sea of Thieves, and a lot of people don't know, because they just play them on their instruments in the game, a lot of people don't know that each of those songs actually has lyrics. And they're all in the book. Not and they're really cool. About. Um, I don't know if Friday the Rapids has anything. Yeah, I don't, do not look at that literally. I, I, don't, I said the original shanties. Well, okay, I saw the original shanties. But I don't think um, they never remember the Stone Age was. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're really cool shanties, actually. Um, and they released a music video for Bukalm with the Glitterbeard update. But that's, I don't think anything about that. Glitterbeard's cool. He's based off a character that died at Rare Office. Or, or a person that died at Rare Office <laughs> named James. Oh, um, and they made, the, they made this glitter great character in the game. It's really cool. Um, anyway, so they go out on this voyage for this ancient cursed chest, and his crew's just having a right old time. They're all getting along, they're all binding. And they finally get to the chest and they dig it up, and they describe it as like, it's this dark chest with purple writing that doesn't stand still. And they're like, okay, it's kind of creepy, but we're gonna take it back. But first, they rest on the island. The island, as far as I can tell, the island they find is on this Kraken Spall, because it's near the Shroud and it's an island in the wilds, I believe. So, um, they go presumably to Kraken Spall and they sleep there for the night. When they, they wake in the morning to cannon fire, the Silverblade's under attack by another ship. Um, the Silverblade crew all get to the ship and they fire back, but Flameheart Jr. is like, how are we gonna get out of this? Then he looks to his right and he sees this huge wall of fog and he's like, hey. I'm going to drive in that fog and fog and use them. No, so he does. Do and as he's driving in the fog, the other ship turns away and he's like, ah, oh, we got him. But then a cedar like, looks and like, you idiot, we're heading into the shroud. Um, so no, no. the Silverblade, a cedar takes the wheel and he spins it around. But it's a little too late. The Silverblade is too damaged from the shroud and it starts sinking. Um, they locked up the cursed chest in their brig because uh, they thought it was her, so it sinks with the ship, yes. Did he have his AirPods in, and that's why he didn't know that? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Flame Heart Jr., he's a rich boy, he had his AirPods in. He, okay. okay. he was listening to like the Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack, he's like, this is so cool, it's like, dun 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 and it leads them down these twisting, winding caves. And in these caves, they find a little moon pool underneath with a chalice, a really big chalice in it. So they pass this chalice around the crew and they all drink from it. And they realize that the chalice doesn't end. The chalice is always full of water and it makes them feel really good. Ooh. Anyway, they continue, they continue through the caverns and all the crew are like, we're feeling a lot better. We don't feel hunger anymore. We don't even feel thirst anymore. As they're going through, we don't even feel like we're old anymore <laughs> and tired and dead. Um, and they get to the last room in this cabin, and there's a skeleton in there with these tattered robes and this like old hat. And he looks up to Flameheart Jr. and he's like, I, I knew your father. My name be the Captain. And this is, it's a real, this is the Captain. They might be Captain Senior, yep. Um, oh, and it's no, also revealed no, no. right now that Flameheart Jr. has turned into a skeleton lord. And all of his crew have turned into normal skeletons because they were cursed either from the chalice or the water or the caves. Something cursed them, and they became skeletons. Flameheart's the only one that kept his cognizance, and he wrote this journal and he put it on the island. Uh, years later, we meet up with Diving Bell, who takes over the second half of the journal, and she writes in how she found this on her and Nine Cat Nero's old isle uh, that they used to play around on. They're married now. They're a married couple. And they, were, they, used to, they used to dive off the uh, shores of this island because they were aspiring divers. And Belle, not too long ago, found the wreck of the Silver Blade, and she actually found the chest that was down there as well. Uh, so they get together on their ship. I forget what their ship is called, but basically, 
Um, it's kind of hard. What, what do they fucking? Yes, it brings to the Merfolk because Diving Bell has earrings that she can use to understand the Merfolk song. It doesn't explain how she got them, but she's a diver. We can assume that she found them somewhere. Uh, so Diving Bell takes her chest to the mermaids, and they're like, "We don't want to touch that. Don't open that. Don't show that to us ever again." And they basically all leave. Uh, they leave them alone. And then Diving Bell's like, "Okay, well, I guess we gotta just keep it with us at this point, so that no one else gets their hand on it." Um, However, they're tracked down by a faction called the Twisted Knives, who are a uh, kind of like the Dark Brotherhood um, in Sea of Thieves. They hunt down the ship and they start sinking the ship. And they take uh, they don't sink the ship actually; they take it over. Um, however, the chest somehow summons a kraken, so it causes the Twisted Knife. It, this is Diving Bell presumes that this chest is cursed with the ability to summon a kraken. So. Basically, basically, the Kraken comes and it destroys the ship of the Twisted Knights. They just take over Diving Bell and then kind of the ship. And they spawn in on random outposts and like, no oh, shit. <laughs> you know, we just got our, we just got our fate around. This isn't fun. Uh, they, they were about to quit the servers for the night, but then uh, Nero talked her into going to get the ship back. And her cook, half a stew Jean, takes over annotating at this point. He's like, oh, I always need you guys to come back. You know, he was a bit of a coward. He didn't like back up with the Twisted Knights, so they let him stay alive. Um, but eventually they get back, they beat, they beat those kids again, they take their shit back, and they kick the chest into the, into the water, saying, well, nothing to do with that cursed chest anymore. Um, they go on for further adventures. And that's the last we ever hear of fucking Diamond Bell. <laughs> Nine Diamond Bell. Uh, so, that's it for Tales of the Sea of Thieves. Uh, any questions? No. No? All right, good. We're halfway through what I have on the board. Theoretically, we're over like 70%. Uh, how's the camera? It's pretty good. Nice. Eleven fifty-six for this current one. All right. Okay. Finally, guys, we made it to the video game. Yeah. <laughs> We've yeah. done all the backstory and stuff. It's all about <laughs> what we finally for. made it to the video game. Yeah. is the first Tall Tale chronologically. It actually came out at the end of 2020, or at the end of 2019, I think, early 2020. It was like a Christmas update, Ooh. The Maiden Voyage. But The Maiden Voyage is basically your origin story on the Sea of Thieves. It's the tutorial for the game, and it shows how your character, the pirates, basically crash landed on a ship just outside the sea, or on an island just outside the Sea of Thieves, surrounded by the shroud called uh, Old Sailor's Isle. And the pirate lord is there, Ramsey, he's all ghosty and stuff. And he's like, hey, um, I'm just going to help you, because this is where I am. And, you know, his journals are all over the island. He's like, I use this as a pit stop to and from the Sea of Thieves years ago. For some reason, don't ask me why, for some reason, you can find the Athena's fortune as a shipwreck on Old Sailor's Island. One know that doesn't make sense, because the Athena's fortune already is a shipwreck. It's the tavern the Pirate Lord uses. So... I think maybe the Athena's fortune might have just been a general name, kind of like the Star Starship Enterprise, or they just used the name Athena's fortune as the moniker for any ship that was the flagship of the Alliance. Um, right, so that's the main voyage. Uh, Ramsey patches her ship up, or lets you patch it up, but guides you. He gives you all your, your equipment, and he sends you on your way. First major expansion in the world is changing arc. This is like the first arc of the video game. I named it The World is Changing off of the world where the lady did. This arc doesn't really have a name. Um, it's The Hungering Deep. The Hungering Deep has this guy named Duke, and he is the member of the Bilge Rats faction. And I have Duke up here. He is your main liaison for the Bilge Rats faction, which was founded by, guess who? Lorena. Lorena is the founder of the Bilge Rats. They are all about adventure in the Sea of Thieves. So Duke sends you on this like investigative detective quest to find Mary Merrick, who is the captain of the killer whale. Uh, Mary Merrick is a uh, he's a shanty man. He makes shanties and he's a good cook. But one day he's been missing. It's under his ship. We find him on um, oh god, what's it called? It's called like Shark Tooth Isle or something like that. Um, we find him on this isle and Merrick's there. And he's like, oi, I was working on a new shanty mate. 
Um, but it was so like he based the shanty off of ancient tombs, and it was so powerful that it awoke creatures deep beneath the waves. And the biggest of these creatures, the hungering one, is a giant megalodon that basically apes the killer whale, the ship. It ate Merrick's leg, and it has a peg leg now. I think it ate both of his legs, actually. So he has two peg legs. And he somehow swam all the way from the uncharted island that I saw all the way down to the shark bait coast. Um, and he's there now, and he basically tells people, uh, yeah, you guys need to go kill the big hungering one. It's the bad one. We need to deal with it right now. And it's this huge megalodon the size of at least two or three Indian galleons. This was the first world event, and you actually needed an alliance of at least two ships to complete it. So you needed, uh, yeah, you needed two ships there uh, to actually, like, they, all, all you guys needed to play the shanty, like the new shanty that Merrick did. He'd teach you the shanty. You guys needed to go to this specific location that he told you about, and then you guys did battle with the megalodon, and it was cool, and it was epic. And that is how the hungering one died. Uh, Biltrats, more on the Biltrats. So Duke is the main liaison for the Biltrats. He's in every town and somehow. And Lorraine's the town The Biltrats send you on like monthly quests in the early stages. Personal skeleton throws that was fucking stupid. It just had players like going and shooting themselves up into high places so they could sit on skeleton thrones. I remember doing this with Ty and Peyton and Hayden, I think, at the yeah, time. I, was there. I remember doing this with you guys. Well, I didn't Hayden do them. I just watched you guys do it because I had played yeah. CDs for about five hours before that. Uh, on to the Sunken Curse. That's the second Bill Trap adventure. Duke has noticed that there's a bunch of mermaid statues emerging uh, throughout the Sea of Thieves. There are, there are three different variants uh, Sapphire, Emerald, and Mer uh, Ruby, and increasing value of difficulty. When you get close, they start damaging you, but if you destroy the statues, uh, then they drop gems, and you can sell these gems to any trading company for however, like, just whichever trading company you want so you get more back. Later on, we learned that the Sunken Curse, like these mermaid statues, they're actually things that Sirens set up. Um, but we'll get to that when we get to it. So, Curse of Sales. Uh, yeah, Curse of Sales, second big expansion for the Sea of Thieves. This adds skeleton ships. And it adds in the plot line and a very important villain called Wanda the Warsmith over here. She was the weaponsmith at, I want to say, Golden Sands Outpost. And she found a cursed metal beneath the waves one day. This started driving her insane. And she made cursed cannonballs with this metal that had different effects. Like, if you shoot the cannonball on the ship, it makes, like, the crew all drunk is one of them. And the other one, like, stops the capstan. Like, they have all these weird magical effects. So... She makes these cursed cannonballs and tries, she uses her mate Salty, who's this, just, this, this dude. <laughs> Salty's just this dude, and he's, she's like, all right, Salty, go and sell the cursed cannonballs in the outpost. And he fails, he's like, no one wants to buy them for some reason. So Wanda gets very vengeful, um, and the cursed cannonballs have been turning her into a skeleton. And she just now realizes that. So she has to go find a secluded workshop, she makes one on Wanda's refuge. For some reason, don't ask me why, for some reason the cursed cannonballs turn Salty into a skeletal parrot. Don't ask me why, he's a skeletal parrot now, and he can talk, and he has the worst voice ever when you finally get to hear his voice. And I heard sucks. him, I think his voice is pretty funny. Salty sucks, and I won't hear anything else. <laughs> well, you're a cheater. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's Cursed Sails. One of the Warsmith basically makes three skeletal fleets that attack each region of the Sea of Thieves. She's finally defeated in the wilds. And she is, at the time being, MIA. We don't really, we seek her flagship. We don't know if she's dead for, for good or not. Nah, um, she'll be back in 2023. Oh, she'll be back. She is, she does come back like very soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, all right, Forsaken Shores. So there are three regions in the game right now. There's the Shores of Plenty, there's the Ancient Isles, and there's the Wilds. Um, however, with the Forsaken Shores, all of a sudden a new region opens up, a fourth region, and it has volcanoes and shit, and it's weird, and it's called the Devil's Roar. And there is one outpost in this region, every other region had two outposts, there's this one outpost here, and it's ran by a woman named Grace Morrow. Grace Morrow was captain of a ship called the Shroudbreaker, which actually used a Shroudbreaker, you know, the artifact I talked about earlier, and used the Shroudbreaker as its figurehead. This was in the days before the fairy land. So, they used the Shroudbreaker to go to the Devil's Roar, and they got hit by a volcano, they got sunk like noobs, 
and the shroud breaker splintered into a thousand different pieces and spread throughout the region. And just recently, that actually took into effect, and it made uh, it made the region come out of the shroud, basically. However, not only were they basically fucked up by volcanoes the entire time they were there, they were sabotaged by one of Grace Morrow's crew members, a little rat-like man named Stitcher Jim. It wasn't Stitcher me. Stitcher Jim. They went. Stitcher Jim was actually a pretty loyal crew member until he opened up what's called a box of wondrous secrets. He got like he, he his mythos skill went straight to ninety nine. He went insane, um, and basically he started killing everyone else. He tried to poison Grace Morrow, but she survived it. That's why he lived to like big and loaded in the game. Um, she like pushed. Uh, well, he pushed one of the other ones off a cliff, and he stabbed another in the back. And this is in the days before the Ferryman, so they both stay dead. And Grace Morrow never forgives him for this, obviously. But now Stitcher Jim's uh, batshit insane, and no one trusts him anymore. Stitcher <laughs> Jim is my favorite character out of any character. I, I agree, Stitcher Jim probably is the best character in the He literally said, well, fuck it. <laughs> Stitcher Jim is like the most like you in the game as well. Yeah, he has to build exactly like your fucking He just goes, you know what, we're gonna do, we're gonna go, we're gonna go off. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's the Forsaken Shores. It opens up the Devil's Roar. There are volcanoes there. At first, it's really cool because there's ashen variants of all the loot with self and more, and everyone's like, yo, we go there to grind out levels. Um, this is actually how I got the Pirate Legend in the game. It's because uh, Forsaken Shores update. And everyone's like, yo, it's cool, ashen shit. Um, about like six months after the uh, Devil's Roar came out, nobody goes there anymore. Because it's just an absolute shit show. Volcanoes are there every single second of the day, and it sucks. Whenever I'm there, we're good then. Whenever you're, you're like a volcano whisperer for some reason. I don't know. So yeah, basically, basically a lot of people complain that there's no PVE servers in Sea of Thieves, and the joke, the big joke is, just go to the Devil's Roar. No one's gonna fuck with you there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, so that's basically the Devil's Roar right now. Festival of the Damned. Um, Festival of the Dam introduces, every time you die, a new color shows up in the Well of Fates. If you get this color and light up your stuff, it, um, it's just cool different lights you put on your ship. The only reason I'm bringing it up, even though it's a small update, the only reason I'm bringing it up is because it's important right now. Shrouded Spoils, last update of the world's changing. Uh, Shrouded Spoils introduces a miniature shroud, which is a fog that goes throughout the Sea of Thieves. It doesn't damage you, but it's this thick fog that basically remains consistent throughout. And you can kind of get fucked up in it. If you get too close to an island, um, you know, like you won't see it come in. And it's also very eerie. It's very silent as well. And I quite like it. That's probably my favorite update in the world is changing. Shrouded Spoils also adds five new smaller variants of Megalodon. The Crested Queen and four other ones. Actually, only three other ones. There's one called the Shrouded Ghost. I still refuse to believe that it exists. I've never seen it, it before. It exists. No one has ever seen the Shrouded Ghost before. I it's saw not it. Real. My it's own not eyes. fucking real. Give me a screen. Give me proof. Rare is doing a cover-up. They want you to believe it's in the game. It isn't. Don't let anyone say that it's not. The second this video goes live, I'm going to get killed by Mike Chapman or Joe Mead. They're going to bust out my door because I... There's so sure a lot of YouTube content on it. All right. Any questions about the world's changing art? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got a list of all my I think uh, John Ross over here. I think he's just me. That's okay. That's all right though. That's all right. He's went for fun. He knows all this. He knows all this. He played the game since day one. Uh, all right. See you guys comics. Uh, I'm gonna rush through this. <laughs> Sea Dogs comics, they were the first comics ever released for Sea of Thieves. The collection is $12. Not gonna lie, they suck. All four of them kind of suck. Um, here's the way the comics work in my eyes. They're all written by one dude. I forget his name now. But his first work with Sea of Thieves is Sea Dog Comics. They, all four of them sucked. They didn't get the price of gold, but kind of sucks. We get to the Bonds of Union, which is all right. Then we get to the Vision, Vision of Order, which is starting to get good. And the Champion of Souls, finally the most recent comic book art, the dude finally nailed it, and Champion of Souls is genuinely the best like Sea of Thieves storytelling ever. And I don't even read comic books. I don't even like comic books that much, but Champion of Souls is really good, and he all this guy started with the Sea Dog comics, which were shit. So I've been able to like progress his evolution of like narrative storytelling throughout the years. It's pretty cool. Um, Alright, so Sea Dog comics, four issues, there's like eight main characters. 
it gets really boggled down. Basically, it boils down to the Pirate Lord's kids. Do you remember them? Uh, they're all grown up now. They are DeMarco Singh and Lissetti Singh. And they have both been contacted by an old member of Ramses' crew, who tells them that his father, their father left treasure for them in the Sea of Thieves. And he offers both of them a map, a map to it if they can prove their identity. I think the old dude is supposed to be Sham. I don't know. He fits my mind's description of Sham. I think he's supposed to be Sham. I don't know. Uh, in my head, kind of Sham. So basically, uh, DeMarco rolls up there, and he's got this chick with him, this Chinese sharpshooter. Her name is Rin Harai, and she's like the best pistol man in the entire world. She's a top tier bounty hunter. She's a dead eye of pretty much anything. Cannons, flint blocks, muskets. She'll shoot him dead, even though all of her guns are highly inaccurate. <laughs> um, she, she accounts for the rotation of the earth or something. I don't know. They're going to yeah. rotate them flat. That's true, that's true. It's flat right now. Yeah, I'm just going to mess around. <laughs> um, so while they're there, and DeMarco's like, yeah, I'll go up and meet the dude later, they see two old friends, like childhood friends of Lissetti there. And their names are, I can't remember them. Uh, their names are Belle Silvertongue, who's like this bard woman. She uses daggers. I think she's supposed to be um, Native American, or not Native American, um, African American, I think. Uh, and then Alessia St. Marina is a French uh, like con artist. And they're basically a tag team. Alessia like, looks a little younger, and she's got like, this blonde hair. So she's very good at like deceiving people into thinking she's less of a threat than she actually is. She does all these con tricks, while Mele Silvertongue, she's a bard, she tells stories, she sings, she distracts people. Uh, essentially, while Alicia is doing this. And they are both crewmates of Lissetti. So, right away, this sets off something in Ren's mind. She's like, well, Lissetti's already here. We need to hurry up to Marco. And Marco's like, nah, we're good. <laughs> um, Mele starts telling the story of the tavern. The tavern's called the Unfired Pistol. And she says, it's called the Unfired Pistol because the pirate lord who built the tavern with his gold, he found these two identical flintlocks in the Sea of Thieves. And whenever other guns were in the presence of these flintlocks, those guns could not be fired. So, one of the flintlocks is here, one of them is in the Sea of Thieves, and that's why no guns can be fired in the Empire Pistol Tavern. Plot point. <laughs> it gets paid off later. So, uh, basically, the market goes up to the meeting area. He sees Lissetti's up there with the old man. She's already got her map, she's like a loser. Um, and then on the way out, she pickpockets. Um, DeMarco's proof of identification off of him. And DeMarco's like, shit, now the dude won't give me the map, so he has to rush after, uh, he has to rush after the city. Um, and then, meanwhile, uh, Mele's down there, and she reveals, because she's drunk right now, so while she's telling the story, she's like, and tonight, I'm sailing away with the Pyro Lord's daughter, and we're gonna take the treasure in the Sea of Thieves. And then Alessia's like, oh my god, Mele, you're not supposed to say that, and now everyone's gonna be on her ass about it. Um, so basically, even though Alessia and Mele have been working together for a long time, and they're basically lesbian lovers, um, uh, the crew, uh, Lissetti's crew, all agree to kick out Mele. And they're like, we don't have room for her anymore. So the rest of Lissetti's crew now is two people, this big soldier man named Seamark, who just fights with his fists. He's like, he's like this big rough dude. Unsure what war he fought in, he's fought in the war though. <laughs> and he basically meets this doctor man, called Dr. Navid, uh, who is this, like, uh, I think Middle Eastern guy who uses bananas in a lot of his medical procedures, kind of wacky. And he's like, we're going to need a doctor anyway, so let's kick out Mele and take him instead. Unless he goes against this, Seamark and Lissetti outrule her though. So, Lissetti's crew right now is this Captain Lissetti Singh, uh, Seamark, Navid, and fucking... Alessia St. Marina. Um, so Rin and DeMarco meet this green sailor dude called Philip, and he's like, I wanna, I always wanted to be a sailor, and Philip is super gay, but he doesn't know that he's super gay. Um, yeah. yeah, it's really gay. And then when they get to the port, the three, Rin, Philip, and DeMarco, they meet Melee, and I was like, I was dumb, but I'll, I'll, I've got a good bridge with the map, we can follow him. So, DeMarco's crew is currently DeMarco, Rin, Philip, and Mele. 
And basically, they go, they go on this big pirate adventure, these two crews trying to get ahead of each other. They make it to the Sea of Thieves. When they get there, again, they find like two pirate ships battling it out, and they get to the Sea of Thieves. For some reason, a fucking trend at this point. Um, they, they, well, you encounter something big when you get there. Uh, but yeah, they both make it through. They both get provisions and meet up at an outpost. There's a lot of like, when they first meet at the outpost, there's a lot of like Mexican standoff shit going on, and some backstabs happen, because Alessia's like, Mele, how could you be working with our enemy? And Mele's like, how could you have betrayed me, Alessia? Um, let's make out. Let's make out. <laughs> they get to that point later, don't worry. <laughs> um, uh, the, only, the only reason you should read the Sea Dogs comics is for Alessia and Mele's uh, subtext lesbian relationship. Um, so yeah. Uh, one important thing is uh, Masendi's crew meets skeletons on an island, and these skeletons can talk. They don't know the skeletons, and Alessia's like, I'm going to go in there and butter them up and see why they're here. So she goes in, and she's like, hey, boys, what's, what's we doing here? And they're, they, they take off their hoods and like, the skeletons are going to kill you. <laughs> that guy. Um, and then, so they fight the skeletons, and they get back to the ship and start sailing away. Um, DeMarco's crew has to deal with an enemy pirate ship attacking them, and, like, okay, so the enemy pirates start, they, they sleep on an island. The enemy pirates, in the morning, start sailing away with their ship, but there's a cannon on the island, and Rin, she doesn't know that these cannons are safe to fire humans at her, because she just got here. But she says, don't worry, you three, I'll fire you guys out of the cannons onto the ship, it'll be fine. I don't fucking, I see these comics really suck. <laughs> these, the sea dogs comics really suck. Um, so Ren shoots them all on. Philip, like, he, she overshoots Philip. He, like, flops into the sea. Um, Melee's the first that gets on there. She, like, gets on the sails and uses daggers to, like, tear down, even though she's damaging their own ship there. <laughs> Melee's kind of stupid. Um, then finally DeMarco gets there. And the, actually, the best moment in this comic is right now, because Melee and DeMarco are doing, like, this back-to-back, -back, like, fighting off all these pirates and stuff. And they're having like banter between them, like, yo, it's Pirates of the Caribbean. It actually feels like Pirates of the Caribbean. The, only, the entire reason I bought this game <laughs> was for things to feel like Pirates of the Caribbean. And it finally does. That's one moment of the comics that is really good. Well, I bet it does. I bet it really does now. Both crews eventually get to the island where the treasure's hidden. And they all like meet up, and it's like, they're all pointing guns at each other. You know, like, first of all, like, the city's crew ambushes DeMarco's and they're pointing guns, and then and DeMarco's like, Rin, and Rin pulls out her pistols, and it's been a big Mexican standoff, basically. Um, so, they're, they're having this Mexican standoff, and all of a sudden, DeMarco's like, all right, all right, because he's got the map at this point. They ended up stealing it back from the city when they first met. Um, so, he's got the map at this point, and he says, all right, the city, uh, you won't shoot me if I do this, and he holds the map between himself and the city, so that if she shoots, she shoots the map and shoots the map. Damn, map just handed me. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's gonna. Not that I'm gonna be honest. Like you, you don't, hold, but like, you don't need all of the map for like, cause it's like. No, I mean just the map, like just the hand map. It's oh. about like this big, maybe. Well, and he holds the stuff. Not gonna destroy the entire map. I don't think that it it's would. It's probably gonna rip through the center, like. I don't know. Dude, Dude, like, these comics suck. Okay, I agree with you guys. These <laughs> comics suck. Like, I'm not about to defend the Sea Dogs comics. They're not even called this. They're just called Sea of Thieves issue one to four. I called them the Sea Dogs comics for shit that we're about to get into. Um, <laughs> we need a counter. Is that the seventh one? <laughs> Do you count when we go back through? Okay. <laughs> so, Funny Ab is on way, I think. Eventually, the map ends up in Philip's hands, and Philip is running away. Um, and then the fighting breaks out, gunfire goes out, somehow no one dies yet. And then Alessia, Alessia's like running up uh, behind Philip and she snatches the map and she starts like Fortnite dancing out. She's like, ha ha bitch, I'm faster than you, I just stole the map. Bam, she gets shot in the fucking heart by Rin and she dies. <laughs> Alessia, like, it's, it's, it's this big fucking moment because everyone's kind of having fun in this big duel right now. And Alessia just gets shot in the heart from the back kills over and dies, and Rin's standing there, and she's like, all right, guys, we did it. And DeMarco's like, Rin, what the fuck? What the fuck, man? He's killing Alessia. And Mele at this point, like, Mele had started to get along with Rin at this point. Like, they'd become all right friends with each other. And at this point, Mele's like, 
fuck you. You just killed Alessia. There's no chance we can fucking recoup after this. No, I'm gonna kill you, bitch. And so Ren's like, oh, this is shit. And he basically starts running and she's like, Philip, pick up the map, we're going. And so she and Philip are now against everyone else who starts rushing after them. Naveed stays back with Alessia. She's dead, but he thinks he might be able to do something. Um, also, this is where Melly, when Alessia's passing away, so Melly says, I love you. Um, they have a moment. Uh, everyone's pissed that Alessia's dead, and it unites everyone. Uh, Ren and Philip do the riddle. Uh, they find the chest, and she's, uh, she's like, all right, Philip, you dig up the chest. And then she goes off, and she gets the sniper position. So then all the rest of the crew like attack, and they just like, they just like beat up Philip. Philip's like, guys, guys, you had a gun. I had to do what you said. And they're like, all right, Philip, we forgive you. And then Ren's over here in the tree with his sniper up. She's like, don't be fucking doing muscle. I better be getting my cut out of this. Basically, this big standoff. They're like, okay, it's okay, all right. So they dig up this captain's chest that has two mugs on it. And they, uh, they can't open it up. Uh, but the last line of the riddle is, uh, the siblings need to share a drawing in order to open up the chest, basically. So they each take the cups. And Seymour pulls out this, uh, this random drink he has, and like, this will put some hair on your chest. And the said he's like, as if I don't have enough. And they drink, and the chest opens. And Mele notices something inside his chest. He's like, oh my god, is that? And then she like looks up to Ren, and she's like, all right, bitch, I'm going to fucking kill you. So she, she just starts charging Ren. And Rin, um, earlier she fell in the water and her gun powder got like soaked, but she cleaned it out. So she tries like shooting uh, Melee, but the gun doesn't go off. It's like, oh fuck, I thought I cleaned this. It takes her too long to reload. <laughs> no, uh, probably, yeah, she's probably not using like a. She didn't have it in extra minutes. Yeah. Uh, so she's trying to shoot and it's, it didn't go off. She's like, what? What the hell happened? She brings out her pistols, they don't go off. Melee gets up to her and Melee's like, sorry, Rin, I'm not gonna fucking kill you. I'll just cut off your trigger fingers and I'll fucking remove your entire way to make a living so your life is hell and you can't make any money anymore. And Ren's like begging for fucking God that she doesn't do this. Because <laughs> um, it is revealed inside the chest, one of the pieces of loot inside the chest is the other pistol, the twin pistol to the unfired pistol, all the way to the barrel. Um, that's why Ren couldn't shoot. Anyway. <laughs> So Rin is basically uh, being threatened uh, to lose her entire fucking livelihood and having to live out the rest of her life as some fucking just low life hobo. Um, and all of a sudden, Lissetti's like, "Oh wait, guys, can we do this later? Because um, there's a bunch of skeletons here, and they're actually after us right now." So they all get up, and Rin and Melly's like, "All right, you're fucking good for now, but I'm gonna come get you later." Um, and they all rush to this uh, cliffside, and they're pinned by this horde of skeletons up on top of this island. And the leader of these skeletons is the gold hoarder. Somehow the gold hoarder got to this island, maybe he walked all the way there, we don't know. The gold hoarder's on the fucking island somehow. And they're backed up against the edge here with the chest and everything. And now it's, uh, DeMarco's like, well, there's no way we can jump out of this one, there's no fucking, like, if we even if we hit the water at this point, because we're over the water, even if we hit it, then uh, we're pretty much screwed. But then they notice one of the ships starts sailing up underneath them, and uh, they notice Naveed's like calling down to them from the crow's nest, and Alessia's at the wheel because Sea of, Port, sea of the Damned, Fairyland, yeah, Sea of Fortnite, Fortnite, Fairyland saved her. It's only so many times you can use death as a meaningful plot point in the Sea of Thieves stories. Oh, oh, Alessia's yeah. not dead. <laughs> right. She came back to life. Didn't see that one coming. And basically all the crew jump down and they're in the ship and they sail away. And Mele and Alessia reunite and Alessia's like, I heard you say uh, you love me and we're gonna fuck now. Um, and basically Ren's also on the ship and she's like standing there with Philip and she's like, wow, everyone's gonna like, everyone, everyone's gonna kill me after this. But no, for some reason everyone's just cool with Ren now, even though she did fucking shoot Alessia. Like, that didn't change the fact that she, at the time, fully intended to murder Alessia, and succeeded, in a sense. But no, they're all cool with her now just because Alessia came back. <laughs> uh, Philip was like, you know what, even if they try to kick you out, I'll defend you, and we'll be the best of friends. And Rose's like, okay, but nothing romantic is going to happen between us. <laughs> Get fucked up. <laughs> and like, never mind, I'll put your fingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
And that's the end of Sea Dog's comics. Um, kind of shit, uh, but it introduces DeMarco in the same scene, who at the end of each of these three comics, the price of gold, bonds, and the, the vision of order, we got a cut back to the future where each of the main characters of these uh, comics are talking to the Sea Dog's representatives, uh, like members of this eight man crew. Uh -huh. And basically, we see the three of them, they all agree to something. We learn in the game, what they agreed to was to fund DeMarco and Lissetti and the entire crew. They agreed to fund them to make the Sea Dogs Arena, which is a big giant tavern in the middle of the map. And they form the Sea Dogs faction. And the Sea Dogs faction is all about glorious combat. It's all about like equal duels and like, it's you basically really Fortnite. Like it's basically Fortnite for the Sea of Thieves. Yeah. You don't like them. Uh, I do like the Sea Dogs. I do like them. You what? I like the arena, and I like I, the game mode stopped being supported recently, but I still like the arena. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. They're all about glorious combat, though. Mm -hmm. Reaper's bones is probably what I think about. Reaper's bones are fun. Why do you hate them so much? Um, because I'm a noob at Sea of Thieves, and they always sing to me. Noob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> any questions about Sea Dogs comics? No. Okay, that's good to hear. I didn't want to answer. Any <laughs> um, why did? Why don't you why, shoot the map? Why, why the map not shoot? Because there was a riddle on it. There's no reason to follow. But but you could pull up the other riddle. No, no, because they couldn't. They, like the riddle revealed itself as they figured out each other. Well, okay. That's not how sea of thieves work. That's from Jack Sparrow. It's no different. Oh, let's do it. We're almost there. We're almost there. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna fucking this again. <laughs> Alright. The Shores of Gold is the second arc in the video game. And it's the first arc that introduces Tall Tales. Tall Tales, um, I already went over the Maiden Voyage Tall Tales. They're like story driven quests in the Sea of Thieves. They're basically the campaign mode to Sea of Thieves. There are currently 17 in the game as of the most recent update. Um, and the first nine came out, they were part of the Shores of Gold update. Um, so if you're keeping track, at the end of this will be 10 Tall Tales to read. So, the Shroud Breaker is the first one. Shroudbreaker basically has a mysterious stranger who is, there are about seven mysterious strangers and there's one at every outpost. And um, basically you go to any one of them at any outpost and he will give you the uh, ship log for the Magpie's Wing so you guys can go and discover the Shroudbreaker. If you recall, the Magpie's Wing sunk by the burning blade, but they only threw, they, they tossed the Shroudbreaker overboard before they sunk. Right. Um, when you find the Magpie's Wing, it's a galleon, even though it was a sloop. Uh, I'm assuming similar to the Athena's Fortnite, it got, uh, it, it was a name used for multiple ships. Um, and probably at this point, like when it was sunk by the Burning Blade, I'm assuming it wasn't captained by the Ramsey again, because Ramsey should have already been retired. Um, so yeah, basically the Shroud Breaker, you find the Shroud Breaker in this ancient vault that the ship log leads you to. Like you find, what the Magpies Wing actually threw overboard was just a key to get to the Shroud Breaker. Uh -huh. And then it's an actual vault in an island that you go to. You open up the vault, you do a little puzzle, and you do the Shroud Breaker. Uh, you get the Shroud Breaker from the vault, it opens up again, you stop filling up the water. And uh, yeah, so, so you get the Shroud Breaker, and it's this little totem guy, but there are four empty slots in him where the gems are supposed to be. Because it's supposed to be four Shroud Breaker gem gems, that's where the actual magic comes. So this dude's empty, man. He, he's running on empty. You bring him back to the mysterious stranger, and you're like, ooh, he's running on empty. Well, um, I know someone who might be able to get you fixed for that. I know Madame Olivia. So he sends you to Madame Olivia, and the reason he sends you to Madame Olivia is because there is one person that had this specific shroud breaker before, and her name is Captain Briggsy. That's right. We're bringing Briggsy back. Just like Shia LaBeouf brought sexy back. What? Uh, Briggsy, he, she, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Briggsy basically, um, yeah, she, she found the Shroud Breaker and she went to Tribute Peak, which is now revealed to be uh, the Shores of Gold. Shores of Gold is what Tribute Peak was renamed by all the pirates. So she goes to Tribute Peak, and that's where she was cursed by the knowledge there, and she became a skeleton lord. And unfortunately, she was driven insane, 
by the gold hoarder who like whispered little sweet nothings in her ear. And she became a skeleton lord. Uh, so she is now technically evil. I do have to erase Briggsy here. However, Briggsy is the most good skeleton lord because she remained conscious for a little while and she was like, well, I want other people to come here to defeat the gold hoarder. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to leave clues. I'm going to take all the gems out the Shroud Breaker, put it back where I found it, and then I'm going to leave the gems scattered throughout the Sea of Thieves, and any other pirate that wants to come and avenge me can do it at the Shores of Gold. Shout out to Briggsy. Honestly, you can mark yourself as just... No one can see it anyway. I don't even know why I bothered to write it down. <laughs> so, the Cursed Road. You go to Madame Olivia, and she gives you the memories of two captains that served under Briggsy. I think that's Abby. Uh, come to Vaughn right now. <laughs> Audience, world, welcome back. Carly, Ica. Okay, we're back. Uh, we're almost done. We're so close. Why well, do I hate this? So, <laughs> the Cursed Road, the second tall tale. Gotcha. It's supposed to, you go to Madame Olivia, and she's all like, you guys go to Madame Olivia from earlier. Uh, she's cool, right? You all like Madame Olivia? <laughs> I hate her. She sucks. <laughs> I've been away from consciousness this entire time. Nice. Nobody else has had the pleasure. Okay, so you go to Madame Olivia, and she... She gives you guys, she gives the players the lowdown, and she's like, I know two captains that knew Briggsy. We track them down, we bring back artifacts that were personal to Briggsy, and, uh, and I can use that to make a compass that points to Briggsy. So you do this, you go track down Briggsy, kill Briggsy, she's dead, kind of, was already dead. You bring her skull to Madame Olivia, and she cracks it open, so Briggsy's for sure dead, for sure, for sure. Um, so so she there, can you do it twice? I don't, I don't think, I think, here, my head canon is whenever a skeleton's memories get extracted from its skull, that is officially when the skeleton dies. So that. So I think Briggsy is 100% dead. Hey, uh, I like Briggsy. I like, Briggsy was cool, she was a tragic character, but now she's dead. Um, I hate a mentor, that's alright. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. You can catch up. Uh, yeah, by the way, we have a new student. Um, no, don't catch up. No, oh, she has it. Yep. <laughs> okay, um, so that ends the cursed grill. However, Olivia tells you, okay, from, from Briggs' memories, I could decipher who knows the locations of the last stones, or who I think does. She leads you to Tasha the Barkeep at Ancient Spire, uh, Suds the Salesman at North Star Seacoast. Madam Olive at Sanctuary Outpost, and Salty the fucking parrot. I love Salty. Fucking hate Salty. So what do you have against Salty? He's a skeletal parrot. That's a he used to be a man. He used to be a man. For some reason, cursed cannibals turned him into a skeletal parrot. Okay. But his business friend, it just turned her into a normal skeleton. Okay. So first of all, I don't know what the fuck happened. Okay, so right. name I'm one of the skeletal parrot. There is no other. Exactly. Idea. That's exactly it's, 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 it's unfounded. Easy completely easy unfounded. Name one, name one. Salty turned into a skeletal parrot, and uh, and he has the worst voice in the game. Do you voice him? Do you I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did voice him back when he didn't have a voice actor. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 but I'm playing Rise of Kingdom. Okay, okay. Yeah. Dude, get, get behind the camera. What are you doing? Oh, God. <laughs> I was in a dog bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, it's um, definitely going. So, Tasha the Barkeep, she's like, hey, back when I was a little girl, this is the legendary story tale. Also, the worst tall tale ever, because you have to read the scribblings of a little child, and it's the fucking worst. Okay, so here's here's my thing. All right. Why are you doing a lecture over Sea of Thieves whenever you hate the concept of the parrot in the first place? Uh, so. Because, well, first of all, I don't hate the concept of the parrot. You because I have a parrot pet in game, and her name is Lenore. Fuck Lenore, no, she sucks. Lenore uh, sucks. I hate yeah. Salty. Salty's not even, he's only appeared once. You gave, you gave me the smile of, you want spoilers? <laughs> you want spoilers? So, Salty has only appeared once. Yeah. 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 Why does KFC... Yeah. Captain Jack Sparrow's coming soon. Why does KFC actually not deliver to Just like, like an Elder Scrolls 6 moment. Okay. I'll take the off my clothes and I'll wear it. Okay. Alright, so that's Legendary Story Time. Yeah. Tasha was like, hey, uh, Briggsy used to come back home and she told me all of her adventures. Yeah. And I used, when I was a little kid, when I was a little dipshit kid, I wrote myself, in my journals, I wrote myself into those adventures. So you have to basically take this fucking journal that this little kid wrote decades ago, and, and you're like, ooh, I'm in the decipher, which 
up with this shock breaker gym, and you finally get it, and you get a decaution. So you think, oh, yeah, this is in the series, turns it, and put it in a shroud of the That is the worst tall tale ever. Um, Stars of the Beat. Stars of the Beat is one of my favorite tall tales. I wouldn't call it the best tall tale. Three hours? Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, was, I was taking it really slowly at the start, too. Okay, so Suds is Briggs' old navigator. He's like a specialist when it comes to constellations and star maps. He gives you guys the information on this, the information he knows, and an enchanted spyglass that helps you like go around and see stuff. Um, and it leads you to, eventually leads you to another piece of the trap breaker. Um, the reason I like this tall tale is because it gives you the cool spyglass as an achievement for completing it that fast. Um, That's his. Next one, uh, Wild Rose. Wild Rose has jack shit to do with anything. It's kind of like a break. I like its cosmetics. It's, it's a cool tall tale, though. Even though it has nothing to do with anything, it is a cool tall tale. So Wild Rose, you meet up with Madame Olive, who's an Order of Souls liaison on Sanctuary Outpost. And she knew Wild Rose and George, and I think she was actually going to marry them. Like, she was going to be the official, like, marrier of this thing. Um, but they went missing a few days ago, and they're late for their wedding. No. They were missing. Uh, 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 pronunciation. Yeah, so we learned. The person. We learned through notes that they left that Matt oh, Olive uh, compiled. Yeah, uh, these right. They were tracked down and killed by a skeleton captain named uh, Rook, who was obsessed with George, George's Wild Rose's to be husband. Uh, uh, so you guys, you reunite their souls with their pendants, and they live forever in the afterlife. For some reason, they can't return. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait, so. When they die, they can't die. Yeah, back. yeah. But when I'm every to, other I'm character dies, because this is this is one of the things. The chronology in this game. This is beginning to sound like a Fallout game. The chronology mm -hmm. in this game's lore is so fucked up, cause I don't know if cause all right, when you go there in uh, Wild Rose, it's like they've been missing for a few days. You know, they they just went missing, so they should be able. To you think that is. <laughs> so, that what they don't is the thing. Captain Rook tracks them down and kills them both. So they don't come back. For some reason, the fairy man doesn't let them back. I don't know what's wrong with that. Or what if they don't, don't want to come back? He doesn't take couples. What if they don't um, want to come there's back? There's also Tales from the Sea of Thieves. It's questionable when the events of this book actually take place. Um, it's, also, it's also theorized that the entire path with Diving Bell, you know, that I talked about, that's her taking over the book. Mm -hmm. It's theorized that, that entire half hasn't even fucking happened yet. So uh, yeah. yeah, there's a bit of a there's a bit of weird chronology. It's because Mike Chapman, who's the creative director of Sea of Thieves, he said uh, around around here in, a, in an announcement, he was like, "There are some events uh, in the books and tells of uh, Sea of Thieves that haven't happened yet." And everyone at the time thought he was talking about Flameheart Junior. But spoiler alert: Flameheart Junior is in the game. Um, I'm not going to tell you who he is because in this. He's in the game now, um, so obviously he was in the game at the time as well. So obviously that can't be true. So what? What? Who's so Flamer Junior? Oh, he's the servant of the flame. Uh, hey, so, hey. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to we'll get to my least favorite fact in the Reaper's Lodge. <laughs> uh, yes. What's that? <laughs> my least favorite fact. <laughs> they're not in, they're not in the game yet. Uh, Wait, they're not in the game, but they. Well, they're in they're in the game now, but in the at the point now. they're not in the game. So yet. yeah, basically, there's also um. When is Captain Jack? There's there? some point where it says the pirate lord, like the Rena, when she meets the pirate lord, she's like, "You sailed the Sea of Thieves when in the Golden Age of Piracy." Oh my god! So it makes you think, hmm, maybe the Sea of Thieves has been a thing for 100, 200 years, because Golden Age of Piracy, the well, Rena acts like it was a long time ago, but fucking here. Uh, DeMarco and Lucetti, Ramsey's children, are like grown up now, they're 30 years old when they come back. So Lorena, like, it's fucking weird. Time the works chronology, differently behind the shroud. I think time works differently beyond the shroud. That's my big explanation. However, I have absolutely no way to explain shroud how wild can grow a beard really quick. Can. Yes. He's, he's, a player. Player. He's, pro player. he's one of like the best players it's, just for yeah, video yeah, games. It's this, it's this dangerous He just plays spot. a video game and, and he so so becomes really good at it. Just yeah, it's this dangerous fog that surrounds the Sea of Thieves and you have to yeah, know yeah, pathways to it. You have to know pathways through to specifically get to the Sea of Thieves 
and that's the sh the shroud is the fog that surrounds. Yeah, so it's really weird for you. Yeah. It could yeah. be anyone. You just gotta be able to. Yeah, yeah basically, yeah. You don't have to be able to stop the shroud. It's between two them and that. Yeah. It's basically curse of straw on about three axes, and straw's a good guy. Yeah. Straw. <laughs> no, Ramsey's Ramsey's basically straw. Ramsey's basically the straw that sees you. So it's a cool dude. Is it free? Straw's not a cool dude. Is it free? Stands for uh. After some, I'm sure you're already there, remember? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, here's my theory. Here's my theory. Maybe Rook somehow knew the ritual to trap souls and objects, because the, the way that you free Wild Rose and George is by putting their pendants together. So maybe Rook trapped their souls in the pendants. That's literally the only thing I can think of. Works for me. Um, <laughs> so anyway, you reunite them. For some reason, they can't return to the real world. They have to remain united in the actual life. Maybe they don't don't fucking ask me how. Maybe they don't want to go back. Maybe they don't want to go back. It's yeah. entirely possible they don't want to That's go back. That's my theory because, man, the real world fucking sucks. We do actually see them later. Spoiler alert. We see them in the Sea of the Damned later. And it's implied that they just have a happy life there. Or undead there. So maybe they just didn't want to come back. Good. Fucking solve me. <laughs> Art of the Trickster. Six Tall Tale. Art of the Trickster. You meet up with Salty on Thunder Valley. Salty started working with this chick called the Trap Maker, and Salty tricked the Trap Maker into working for Briggsy. The Trap Maker was forced by Briggsy to make another, to make like a hideout for another Shroud Breaker gem. You remember those? I know the Wild Rose kind of distracted me from that. Oh. Shroud Breaker gems, that's what we're after, guys. Woo! Yeah. Uh, the Shroud Breaker gems are pieces of the Shroud Breaker. Ten that they the need, breaker. You need to put it in there in order you to break it. You know what the Shroud Breaker does? It breaks Shrouds. Dude, that different shroud takes a break. Okay. Wait, it's banned. Okay. Okay. Um, so basically, you follow the clues left behind by the trap maker's journal. You find the third shroud breaker gem. There's only one more to go. Woo! Uh, the ferryman gives you the seventh quest. The ferryman, you have to literally die to get this quest. You walk up to him and you're like, ferryman, what's going on? And he's like, go find my fucking grave. I need you to do something for me. <laughs> no, I left my fucking He's like, I left my stove on before I committed suicide. I really need you to go and turn it off. Can you go and shut my casket from open to slightly open? Yeah. So you basically, you go to Marauder's Arch, you dig up the ferryman's sarcophagus, and you get the uh, Lantern of Souls. And what the ferryman wants you to do is he wants you to go to Old Faithful Isle to free the souls of Eli Slate's crew. Remember Eli Slate and Fontaine and Dinger and uh, the woman, the fourth crew woman no. who jumped off. But she doesn't remember because <laughs> she wasn't here. No, she didn't. No, she was here. I she remember. Was, she just doesn't remember. She's getting her neck. She doesn't remember. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Actually, yeah, John Ross does probably know about Eli Slate as well. I fucking know. <laughs> So yeah, you go there and you free you go there and you free the souls of Eli Slate, Fontaine, and Dinger, and they're also in the afterlife. They don't come back. Hell. Hell. Um, Revenge of the Morning Star. You go to this uh, woman named Sandra, who's the shipwright at Dagger Chief Outpost. She sends you on a quest to track down the Morning Star, the wreck of the Morning Star, and in the process defeat Captain Greymarrow once and for all. To defeat him, it's kinda weird. In order to defeat Captain Greymouth, who remember we last saw enslaved the souls of Sir Arthur Pendragon and his crew, as we all know. Um, yeah, in order to defeat Captain Greymarrow, you have to resurrect him and then beat him up again. And no, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I you understand. You gotta kill him twice. Yeah, you have to, like... How else are you gonna kill me, the ghost? Here's what... Okay, so it's implied that he... Because he has the fourth straw breaker gem. So what I think happened was he put the gem in his body so that someone would eventually have to resurrect him one day to complete the straw breaker. Maybe that That's the biggest fun. theory I got for you. Yeah. Captain Greymarrow, he sucks. Uh, Sir Arthur Pendragon is based and cruel. <laughs> yeah, Sir Arthur Pendragon. This all started with Gordon Ramsay. Though. This all started with Gordon Ramsay. He's right up here. <laughs> Check the camera. Check the camera. Yep, it's still going. Hi, camera. You guys are 13 minutes. I hope that you guys are really enjoying this, because I fucking am not. <laughs> I am enjoying the final hours. You guys got breaks. Okay, so, yeah, you resurrect Greymarrow, I'll beat the shit out of him, and get the final piece of the shroud breaker. Alright. This is, if you're keeping track, this is 
So he died to become a skeleton lord. He then died again, and then he resurrected him and killed him again. All this right. is the third time Grey Marrow's died. This is it. Well, this is why I call him the Roach um, of the Sea of Thieves. <laughs> Um, so, finally, you complete the Shroud Breaker and you go to Moral's Peak Outpost, and she fits it, she completes it, she fits it to your uh, bow of the ship, the bow of the ship. Um, and she's like, alright, go to the Shores of Gold and defeat the Gold Horde or whatever. Because that's what we're doing. Right? Dude, <laughs> I, mean, I haven't done that before. You know how have to find okay. all of the Gold Horde? Yes. The gold hoarder was Ramsey's first mate. He betrayed him because he loves gold, and he became a skeleton lord known as the gold hoarder. And he has pieces. He has like pieces of gold melded onto his bones and shit. He's got like a golden chin and emerald eyes. He's really cool. Originally, so I drew I drew Ramsey up here, and originally over on the villain side, I was going to draw the gold hoarder until I realized I couldn't with the colors of markers I had available. So I just drew flame heart sneaker. Who do you think is the biggest bad? Flameheart or uh, gold, uh, gold the, the gold hoard just gets dunked on, man. I'm gonna be honest with uh, you, I think that it's me. I think that, I think that he's the big bad as he is. I just, I do an all of our job. Right now, the big bad is Davy Jones. I, I'm all of our fucking, I'm all of our fucking, so I'm gonna take it What? That's, yeah, exact, that's exactly why I'm doing this, because most people don't know how deep the lore is of this game. And it is way too deep for the amount of content. Dude, you don't even know the game. I read a funny yeah. game that Dunrossi hated and played wherever Dunrossi You read there are Fortnite comics? I think I bought them. Holy shit. I bought Sea of Thieves comics, but yeah. that's even fucking better. <laughs> okay. Yeah, get ready for the Fortnite It's also that. It's also that. I want an outlet to see, to, to just say how enraged I am about all the stuff that doesn't matter. <laughs> <sense. laughs> yeah, I, want, I want a reason to complain about the game while praising it for having a deep floor. <laughs> but also, I just thought it was a way to get everybody else to add to the community. But also that, yeah. You guys have, uh, you guys heckle me and now you're dead. Soon. I, I know I said soon all the way back here, and we're over here. But soon. He said soon at like 7 o'clock. I, I said, I said are soon. Coming. The, 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 and Joe Star Martin said, hey, David, so, can you go back to the beginning of the video when I first asked, and it's daylight outside, and <laughs> <laughs> my lights on. <laughs> Holy shit. They've been able to see the chronology of the video. <laughs> I feel bad for you. Well, well, watch this at the moment. I'm not letting you go home. My house is locked. And I'm not letting you go home. There is indeed a fucking gun inside this thing. Yeah, that's right? But yeah. So, Shores of Gold. Hey, final, <laughs> final tall tale of the arc. Shores of Gold. So, you make it to the Shores of Gold with the Shroud Breaker. You do all these puzzles. Eventually, you find the Gold Hermit's Coin. It leads you down to the ancient layer of Rathbone. You get down there. You, your crew finds Rathbone, and you just start beating him up and kill Rathbone. I, I would love it. I would love it. Trust me. All right, guys, don't the pirate lord shows up and he gets a speech. He's like, oh my god, you killed Rathbone. That's cool, guys. Anyway, I'm going to go to sleep. Um, night, night, night. Um, and he says, it's not about the gold, it's the glory. And that's the explanation as to why you can't pick up the mountains of gold in Rathbone. It's area. about the friends you made along the way. Also, all of the gold in Rathbone's layer is probably cursed as well. Are you fucking up with the candle over there? I wouldn't mind. Can I be Make sure he's not doing anything. Hang on. I trust him. Can I be the next gold hoarder? Are you guys just what? Can I be the next gold hoarder? At this point, at this point, Rathbone would probably want to be. I'm already. He's done. I've already called him the episode. Rathbone, he's been defeated what five times? He's been defeated more times than Green Arrow. Just keep coming. L. So you finally you get the gold hoarder skull. You sail back to the Sea of Thieves. You give it to the Order of Souls, and you're basically like cool. We did the Shores of Gold. Those are the first tall tales of the game. They came in the first anniversary update. Any questions? No. All right. Oh, yeah, questions. Does anyone want to give me shit uh, for being stupid? When does Why are you wearing that? Uh, because I'm stupid. Why did okay, you Why are you not happy to make questions? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that Sir Arthur Pendragon didn't die. Dragon didn't die. Dragon. I also wish that Sir Arthur Pendragon didn't die. I wish he was real. I'll I'm gonna get you a medal. <laughs> <laughs> the next one I get is probably.
Okay, so the third end game arc, the Ashen Age, it starts with Dark Relics. Basically, Duke is like, you remember Duke, the Bill Dress guy. He's like, Duke. all right, guys, the Order of Souls lost all these relics. Yeah. They want you to go and get them back. So you go and get Dark Relics for the Order of Souls, and you give them to Duke for some kind of reason. Uh, <laughs> Classic Duke. Where, where's the ending and where does this, where does this? So here's the beginning. Here's the beginning. I did, here, here's like the first half, and now we're on the second half, and we're right here. And this is the end. This is all your heroes, this is all your villains. For a second, I thought, thought the last square is just a set plot line, and I was like, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, do you like my, by the way, I haven't mentioned this entire time, do you like my fucking artwork up here? I'm really proud of this and nothing else. <laughs> That's reasonable. <laughs> um, Yo, the F right next to it is actually the most impressive part for me. That's I, the entire word of, of is this is the thing I'm most impressed with. The A, the A, I mean, the A. I think it's a little bit lopsided, but I guess it's okay. That's all right. It's sort of, it's sort of, Yo, it's out of names. The A, the A is entirely is that really, really good to I do. I, I analyze the logo to your teeth. Well, maybe this one for me. It's pretty good. And um, that's, the only, that's as far as it goes. <laughs> that's as far as it goes. I did no effort for the rest of this. <laughs> You're just going off your own knowledge. Oh, yeah. Dark Relics. Um, was it like a skull? Okay. Uh, no, no. It was, yeah, there was ritual skulls. There were Kraken eyes and all that sort of shit you had to get from the um, So Duke. Also, you have to find um, Reaper's Chests. This is when Reaper's Chests came out. Around there, actually. I don't know. Um, but Duke is like, uh, get these Reaper's Chests. They're showing up out of nowhere. And uh, and I'll just take what's inside, I guess. Fuck <laughs> you! I'll give you ten balloons for him. Uh, and so Duke eventually he ends up he ends up opening up all these chests, and he finds cool cosmetics in them that he can he sells to you on the black market. So basically, he just fucking won. <laughs> I get dunked on by Duke. Um, and also, and, and some of the crates he just found rags and bones. So he resells the rag and bone crates to whoever the fuck wants them at random outposts. However, uh, when we figure out who wants them, it's this mysterious woman in black robes with this white porcelain mask at the Uncharted Island of Dyquo. And she is building something there. If you remember, that's where the killer well was sunk. So uh, she is building something there. And she doesn't speak, she's just painting. And in these paintings, you can see there's one of like a, a few chalices. And there's one painting, and this reveals what her identity is. There's one painting of the secret workshop on Wanderer's Refuge, proving that the mysterious woman at I-12, she is indeed Wanda, oh. and she's back from the undead, and she's here to kick some ass. Yes, now. You're going to get this popular Trish. That's what I say about Trish. Okay. Oh, also, all right. All right. for a portion here, Stitcher Jim comes in, and he's, uh, he sends Duke off. Stitcher Jim still around? Stitcher Jim is still around. Don't ask me how. He's got to be an old ass man. <laughs> Stitcher Jim comes in and he's like, Oi, oi, my, uh, I'm filming with, for Duke uh, for this week. I sent him off somewhere. And he, he forges this letter in Duke's hand that explains, like, Oh, Duke, you're going to be gone for a little while. When Duke gets back, Jim disappears. And Duke is like, I don't remember writing that letter. I think Jim fooled me. <laughs> What a crook. Anyways, yeah, that's the last time we see Stitcher Jim to chill around. There. I don't want to see him anymore. He should be dead. He will die. <laughs> Are each one of those lines a different thing that you talk about? Yes. So we've got like 10 sections here, and each line is something How different. How far are we right now? We are the second section from the end. The Ash and Age arc. We're almost done. We weren't here for the worst of it. We weren't here for the worst of it. The worst of it was the Sea Dogs comics. <laughs> no, I actually enjoyed that one. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I actually enjoyed it. It was Athena Part 1. Yeah. And maybe Athena Part 2. Yeah. Actually, I would, I would say Athena Part 2, probably. Because I don't really like that section that much. Even though it has Lorena in it, she's important. She comes back later. Dude, fuck Lorena. Literally. <laughs> Do it. I'll wait. <laughs> um, okay, so there's only two tall tales in the Ashen Age arc. The first one is the Seabound Soul. 
Uh, see about soul. Oh wait, fuck, I have one of those words again. So, yeah, you know those, uh, what was that, the Halloween event? It's the Halloween event. You know those dark relics that you've been collecting for the Order of Souls? Yeah. Basically, someone stole a couple of them and set them up on uh, Old Boot Fort, which yeah. is a fort in the middle of the map. And if you go there, and you, you have to light every lantern on Old Boot Fort with each of the different colors of the Well of Fates. Remember that from Festival? Yeah, yeah. yeah. After you do that, and after you put a ritual school down, you summon Grey Marrow. You summon a ghostly specter of Grey Marrow. Do you talk to him? You, no, you fight him. Again? Yes, you fight him again. And you know the shadow skeletons in the game where you have to shine light? Yeah. Right? They basically they added in a few more variants of those. They basically operate like normal shadow skeletons, but instead of shining just the random light, Let's say it was a white shadow skeleton, you had to shine the white light on it. Racism. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's the Fort of the Damned. Someone brought back Grey Marrow. So, like, the Dark Relics actually, because there's this bit of fog that surrounds the Fort of the Damned. So what happened was someone used the Dark Relics to pull a section of the Sea of the Damned into the real world. What if it was that one woman, the Reaper stole her? It was. It was Wanda and the Pit. Troll <laughs> Grey Marrow. Yeah, it was, it was Stitcher Jim and Wanda the Pit. They just fucking trolled Grey Marrow like a fool. <laughs> they did. They brought him back. Basically, this was what people suspect was the Fort of the Damned was them like seeing how well they could resurrect people. Um, so it was a bit of a failed experiment for them. Because they couldn't resurrect Grey Marrow. They just brought back a ghost of Grey Marrow. No, the whole point was to bring back Grey Marrow to get his ass kicked again. <laughs> just to troll Grey Marrow one last time. What I, think. I think they chose Grey Marrow because they knew that someone was going to come around and kick his ass. Okay, the Seabound Soul. This is everyone. The Seabound Soul is a telltale you pick up on a little island called Shipwreck Bay, if you recall that island. And you pick it up in the captain's quarters of a shipwreck on Shipwreck Bay called the Black Witch. And it's Pendragon's ship. What? Yeah, remember when Pendragon, he got his soul enslaved by Grey Marrow? Yes. Yeah, he was enslaved by Grey Marrow. Yeah. Pendragon's back! <laughs> And and back, baby. You go into the happy. You go into the captain's quarters and you see the dark relic set up there. And Pendragon comes out of his painting as the specter, and he's like, "Oh, hey, I'm a British man." He goes, "What's good?" He goes, "What's good?" And he's like, uh, "This kind stranger." He says, "This kind stranger came and released him from the photo, did the ritual." This stranger was Stitcher Jim. Stitcher Jim released Pendragon from his portrait, um, and Stitcher Jim left behind a book for three other captains, this uh, Pendragon to free, which is Blade of Souls. So, you do this, you track down a few ghostly visions of ships, and you free two captains and learn about their memories, and those two captains were locked in combat with a ship, uh, just, just this random ship with like reddish sails, and it was captained by a skeleton lord just called the Commander, in the notes. You get on Flintlock Peninsula, which is the final island in the Tall Tale. You get there, you go around into this vault, and you find the last skull of the, uh, the last skull of the captain of the three captains you were meant to uh, free. And you go in there, and you bring out the dude's skull, and it's kind of got ashes on mm -hmm. the ground. And you bring it to Flameheart, and he does the ritual to release the soul, and it happens, and there's silence in the air. And then this big red fucking skull appears in the sky. And it says, ha ha bitches get trolled, I'm playing Parson here. And Stitcher Jim did it again! Stitcher Jim is somehow Stitcher fucking Jim fooled uh, Pendragon, who has fought uh, the Ashen Lords before. Oh. He's fooled Pendragon into resurrecting Flameheart as a ghost this time. Mm. So Flameheart doesn't have a physical body, it's actually probably destroyed at this point. And also the commander, you know, the uh, captain of the ship that was basically the funeral procession mm -hmm. for them. Uh, the ship was the burning blade. Uh, but yeah, the commander, the commander is revealed to be Old Horatio, one of the Ashen Lords. And Old Horatio, this is when he parts the shroud with the look of his eye. Uh, but he comes back later, because he's Old Horatio. And he's oh old yeah, Horatio. Old Horatio. So that's the Sea God's Soul. Uh, Reaper's Bones shit. <laughs> so the Reaper's Bones faction gets introduced. Right now, Wanda's their spokesperson. She's on our club. And she's like, um, give me presents. <laughs> She was, okay, okay, <laughs> So, gotta be real with you. <laughs> the Reaper's Bones faction was actually introduced in the Christmas update, the Festival of Doom. Um, 
And to get like renowned with them. How many more minutes on this journey? Uh, we've got like at least an hour left on that thing. Uh, to get renowned with them, you had to give gifts to other pirates, or you had to give gifts to Wanda, and you got gold that wins their reputation. Why is the faction called the Reaper Thrones, which will later be known for being the PvP faction, giving gifts to everyone? The fuck they couldn't exist. Fucking, I don't know, man. Fucking. <coughs> what? Why are they pirating? I don't understand. I don't know. Festival of Giving is actually around when I stopped playing the game for a few months, so. Sorry, guys. My, my infinite knowledge of CP is worn out. You fucking joke the way I don't have a hack for hot. You lie. Uh, Legends of the Sea. This woman named Umbra. She's cool. She's a member of a faction called the Scribes. She's the only member we've ever seen, and the Scribes are all about detailing the history of the Sea of Thieves. I'm basically Umbra. Uh, well, <laughs> and she... You want to stick your gym head <laughs> Do not say I'm like, stick your gym. I hate Dude, stick Dude, out of all the Sea of Thieves characters, which are you? Take this quiz. <laughs> Take this quiz. Um, okay. So Umbra basically rewards players for going out and finding Easter eggs in the game, and she gives you cool tattoo sets and balloons. Uh, she's cool. She also does the glitter beard stuff later on. I'm not going to touch glitter beard like I said earlier, but he's a cool Easter egg. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Ty and I did the recently did the last glitter beard journal, and the, like to unlock it, you have to have eight people playing the calm shanty all the way through, and it's it's pretty cool. Not gonna lie. Pretty calm. Uh, but anyway, enough of me being gay. Um, no, I haven't. Yeah, I can't, I can't say I love this game too much, because then I look soft. <laughs> I have to start hating it again. Cruise of Rage. Uh, Cruise of Rage introduced the Chest of Rage, which was another cursed chest that would blow up if you didn't feed it water. No. <laughs> Not like sort of like the opposite of the uh, Chest of Sorrow. Hell. Um, the Heart of Fire, the second of two tall tales in this arc. So if you're counting, we are now 12 tall tales deep. Five more. They're all coming pretty soon. The Heart of Fire. Um, this is, you find, so Grace, Mar Grace Morrow and Pendragon help you track down Stitcher Jim's hideout. And you go to Stitcher Jim's hideout and you get a key there and you solve some puzzles and it ends up pointing you to an island called the Devil's Thirst, which is where the Heart of Fire is and the Heart of Fire is playing like flavor. You go there, it's full of traps and fire and shit. And Stitcher Jim's running through it with his chest. He's like, okay, you're never gonna catch me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's running through with his chest. And he, gets, and he gets to this final, uh, he gets to this final room where you can see the ghost of Burning Blade. And Pedro's like, yes, open the chest and you will see an ashen lord, my, my, my servant. And Stitcher Jim opens the chest and his hand starts burning. And he's like, you betrayed me. No, he said, no. I said you would see an Ashen Lord, my lord. I just didn't say who it was. No. <laughs> and playing part, uh, Stitcher Jim begins the process of turning into an Ashen Lord. Okay. He runs off screen to a uh, place that we don't see. Effectively, Stitcher Jim's dead because he probably won't retain much of his consciousness when he becomes an Ashen Lord. No. Oh, also, dude, he's going to be tinkered down. <laughs> he's just bling, bling, bling boy and fucking see if he gets as much as badass. Give me okay. a a bit of an Easter egg, you see Wanda for the last time for a while now in this update. You see her off in the distance between some rocks. She's basically watching everything that goes down. The second Stitcher Jim gets betrayed, she just nods and like recedes into the darkness. And this is where something happens that I won't touch on until here. But it's a pretty big event that uh, has to do with Wanda's character development. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's... That's Heart of Fire. Um, you, you go to the chest, you and your crew go pick up the chest that Stitcher Jim just got fucked from. You pick up the chest and you bring it to Pendragon. Pendragon releases the souls in this chest and it's revealed that, you remember Rosinda, or Rob, Rodriguez, Dunn, and Anna from earlier, his old crew from the Black Witch? Yeah. This is the chest they were imprisoned in and this is Pog. where he releases them. Yeah. Trolled. So they're all happy in the afterlife together. Okay. Uh, Ships of Fortune. I don't have it up here because it's pretty short. Ships of Fortune introduces the emissary system where you can choose to fly the colors of any faction that you want to earn extra reputation in and extra gold in. Um, this marks you as a bit of a target because the Reaper's Bones faction, emissaries for the Reaper's Bone get rewards for basically sinking other ships. So, okay. sinking, like, they get rewards for turning in the emissary flags. 
from dead shit. So it should make a PvP and a PvE test. Because <laughs> right. it's gone to the devil's work and all PvE see if he trust me, no one fucking does that. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, basically the Reaper's bones are all about sinking ships and turning in their emissary flags. And the reason they do this is because the Servant of the Flame wanted to disappear. The new head of Reaper's bones is the Servant of the Flame, who's the sky in all black and red robes with a golden mask. And he says, uh, the way of the pirate's life should involve no trading companies, and that's why we hunt down the other emissaries. Damn, bro. So, the so yeah, he's, he's the true most based and red pill pirate out there. If you think about it, the servant of the flame is the most based red pill pirate. And the etching, there's, there's a big trap door. We don't know where it leads, but there's a big trap door in the middle of the Reaper's Bones hideout. And there are skeletal inscriptions, and I'm fluent in skeletal. So I know what they mean. Oh, okay. and, and the skeletal inscriptions lining the trap door say pirates for all eternity. And in the Tales from the, Salt, uh, Tales from the Sea of Thieves book, when you see Flameheart's final form, Flameheart Jr.'s final form is a skeleton. There's a skeleton by the way. Good luck. When you see Flameheart Jr.'s no, final sure. form. Thank you. Pirates for all eternity. You, f we first see them in Tales from the Sea of Thieves on the page that reveals Flameheart Jr.'s final skeleton lord form. So these words reveal that the servant of the flame is indeed Flameheart Jr. And if he's still working with Wanda, which is likely, both Wanda and Flameheart Jr. at this point have indeed betrayed Flameheart's savior. So <laughs> that is getting his fucking um, haunted shores. Haunted Shores is where Sea Bad Soul pays off, because the ghosts, um, like, uh, we're almost at the end of the second last one. Yeah. Haunted Shores, um, that's where Flameheart, well, it's a new world event where Flameheart's big ghostly skull floats in the, above an island. This is what it looks like, kind of. Um, and Flameheart basically taunts you, and he sends waves of skeleton ships out to kill you. Or, not skeleton ships, ghost ships that shoot like rates and shit. They're pretty cool. And eventually, his own ghostly burning blade comes out, and he is defeated by an alliance of pirates that include uh, Glitterbeard and Merrick. Basically, even though the Haunted Shores event like happens all the time, you can always see Flameheart in the sky. In canon, in the lore, the Haunted Shores event only happened once, and that was when Flameheart met his defeat again. Oh, get your ass kicked. Like, <laughs> like all the other characters. So right now, he's sort of sitting in the background, sort of plotting. Ashen Winds, final update of the Ashen Age arc. This is the, what reintroduces the Ashen Lords. You guys remember the four of them? Red Ruth, Captain Grimm, Old Horatio, Warden Shi. They're the generals of Flameheart's army. They're being resurrected by chalices that have these big red tornadoes. Skeletons are resurrecting them. You go and fight them all, and they're dead again. Hey. So this is the end of the Ashen Age arc. And we start the final arc, the Titan, the Pirate's Life. <gasps> It does First of all, it's not a plot line. First of all, this arc begins with Duke, our man, the man we've grown to love, getting kicked out of the Bill Traps. Bruh! Duke I is, dirty. he is disavowed. Lorena's like, you've been running this shit wrong. I'm taking it back. Get out of here. Lorena. I don't want you around. Lorena basically fucking stabs him in the back, and Duke is not the liaison for the Bill Traps. No. Lorena was the woman that, that uh, fucking, that was a part of the Merchant Alliance OG, right? No, Lorena is the main character of Athena's Fortnite party. Oh, uh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, the one that definitely wasn't a prostitute. Yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, Duke is going all around the Sea of Thieves trying to find secrets, because he's like, well, I'll be a secret now, but we'll secrets. Oh, well, that's so, crazy, dude. So he first meets up with Umbra, he tells him about weird shit, and then he... <laughs> um, Umbra tells him where to like, I, I think she tells him, she might not know, but basically Duke figures out where to find these weird runes all over the place, like these weird tablets, these semicircular tablets that were left by the ancients and they have skeletal um, script on them. And since, since these are ancient tablets, it's led many lore nerds like me to believe that the skeletal script is actually a, uh, a like a evolution of the ancient language. So, 
Um, yeah, he finds these and he pieces together some big secret about the world. And Duke is last seen on Old Salt's Atoll, looking out to the west end of the map. And he's like, something's coming in the deep. Um, and he begins hearing the Song of Sorrow in his head. My man, no, he's coming, no. So, the first pirate's wife falls out. Who called a pirate's wife? Oh. You meet with a strange woman called the Castaway. And she appears on the shores of some outlet. And she guides pirates to adventure uh, with her tales. Uh, she acts as like the new hub for the five pirates that fall tales. Is Castaway um, Calypso? Yeah, she's Calypso. Oh my god. <laughs> I knew it. Um, I got 30 extra minutes. Nice. Uh, so in the first hotel, tale, Pirate's Wife, she guides the player character to the Sea of the Dam through a portal, uh, through a ritual which opens a portal there. Uh, you're led to a town, a town of the dead called uh, Sailor's Grave. And the reason it's a town here in the Sea of the Dam is because the cursed captain, who is like the main sort of big guy here, head honcho, literally head honcho, he's just a head. <laughs> um, he basically sabotaged the lighthouse so that the fairy of the dam would never find old sailor's uh, grave. Um, and this is because he didn't want anyone getting his treasure. He was kind of jealous like that. So the cursed captain, oh, no, the um, he guides you through old sailor's uh, grave. You figure out that uh, the Monkey Island video games are connected to the Sea of Thieves canon. Uh, also really? Yeah. Actually? Yeah, they are. Let's go. Um, <laughs> anyway, you reactivate the lighthouse, and the ferryman goes to the shores of Old Sailor's Grave. For some reason, the cursed captain helps you do this. Maybe he has ulterior motives. We'll get to it. Get him off my island. So, uh, the ferry to Dam comes, and you take the rowboat uh, that was at the back of his shipwreck. You take the rowboat to the Ferry of the Dam, and you stow away on the Ferry of the Dam. And there is, because uh, Calypso sent you here to find a prisoner who's on the ferry. Uh, Calypso, she's the castaway. The castaway is Calypso in disguise. Calypso, specifically from Pirates of the Caribbean, not Calypso of the Goddess. I was so confused there. I was like, so we have Arthur Pendragon and Calypso. <laughs> Arthur Pendragon isn't the same Arthur. Actually, um, he kind of is. He's uh, that Arthur Pendragon's son. Bro, yeah. very weird. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. He is the Arthur Pendragon you're thinking of. Well, Sir Arthur Pendragon in the game, he is his son. Wait, you're yeah. telling me King Arthur had a son who yeah, became he, a pirate? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, like a king from 800 fucking BC. Uh, Arthur Pendragon, Pendragon, no, Arthur Pendragon was later. Was he? I don't know. Okay, so he's maybe just a descendant of King Arthur. My man! Just I, I think he's, or, he says, because at the beginning... Or just thought to fuck up the Arthur Pendragon placement in his time in history. Or maybe they just fucked it up. Uh, but yeah, like at the beginning of the uh, Champion of Souls comics, Arthur Pendragon basically mentions, no, I'm not that one, but I do come from his bloodline. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they are related. Um, good, good, good. And so, you sneak aboard the Fairy of the Dam. And you sort of look around, and you're trying to find a prisoner on there that Calypso sent you to find. So you're stowed away on there, and you get to the last room, and you see this little fucking dog, and it's got like a keychain in its mouth. And some wacky character is like in the cage down there, and he's got like a little bone. And he's sort of like coming like, here, little doggy, come over here. And you get close enough, and your lantern uh, shines on uh, his face. I got a question, I got a question. What's the question? When does that character show up? Oh, so it's it's okay. Um, all right, we're a bit late. We're a bit late, actually. No, I don't want to get yourself started. Okay. Uh, okay, so, your lantern shines. Your lantern shines on this man's face. And he's revealed to be none other than Captain Jack Sparrow. Oh, God! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that bit is Welcome so back, Chris. And so <laughs> I've seen you standing there for so long. Welcome back to the oh, so stupid. <laughs> He's got a he's got a butcher's knife up to his throat. Oh my god. That bit I I was like, ah, oh, it's not gonna be too much longer. I'm just gonna prolong it as long as possible. So basically Captain Jack Sparrow comes out and he's like, oh I've got a little treasure. Dog. Sorry about the dog. I fucking I didn't forget about the dog. We didn't talk about it enough. <laughs> okay, so Captain Jack Sparrow has this weird lantern like treasure on his tip. And the reason so the ferryman's brig is only used for people who have who are big potential threats to the Sea of Thieves. So the reason Captain Jack Sparrow is down there is because his treasure 
is a big threat to the CFPs because Davy Jones used it to track them down. So um, uh, you go up to the top deck, the ferryman lambast, he's like, oh, oh, what you doing with that deck? Oh, what you up to? Uh, what are you doing that to? What are you doing that to? <laughs> and um, basically, you're in the uh, Sea of the Damned, but the Flying Dutchman has a really cool ability to show up in the, ferry, the Sea of the Damned. What? So Davy Jones and the Flying Dutchman, it shows up, and you, you're on the ferry, uh, you're on the ferry of the Damned, so you're shooting at the Flying Dutchman, it's like the best fucking moment in the entire video game, it's such a cool battle. There are ocean crawlers, uh, which are the result of the sunken curse all the way back here. Remember the sunken curse? Yeah. Those statues that you destroyed were actually uh, fermenting ocean crawlers. And what if you- the gem them? Yeah. If those, uh, those statues were like cocoons, and when they're allowed to mature fully and then burst open, they become a different type of ocean crawler. Oh. There are three types. There's the uh, uh, electric eel type, which <laughs> so, like, sounds like a fucking Pokemon. Um, it's fast and shoots lightning bolts. There's the poisonous clam type, which has a clam mouth and like this weird frog-like body, <laughs> and it runs at you and it sprays poison. And then there's the damn crab, and the damn crab is the huge crab, and it's the ruby variant, and it's like this big crab thing that swallows you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you fight those, and then uh, so Captain Jack, I also said Captain Jack Harkins. Captain Jack Sparrow's treasure is stolen by a ruby ocean crawler, and he. Uh, the Flying Dutchman lets out like a bit of a shockwave, and he falls off the ship as well. So not only have you lost Jack Sparrow's treasure, you've also lost him. There, he's still in the Sea of the Damned. The Ferryman's like, died. you fucking kids, I'm bringing you back. It does, I'm, I'm not letting you stay I'm bringing you back to the real world. You already fucked shit up. Yeah. Um, basically, second tall tale. Uh, Calypso sends players to a location west of Bold Salt's Atoll. Um, where hundreds of feet below the black, uh, so hundreds of feet below this location, the black pearl was sunk by sirens. So you have to go down there. You do battle with fucking sirens. This is the first time we've ever seen sirens in the video game, by the way. They're cool underwater enemies. You shoot them with like tridents and shit. They're really cool. Uh, Abby, sirens are e evil merfolk. Merfolk are kind of cool, and they sirens are evil. I, you probably already knew that, but just to have the distinction. Is there something I can throw at you? So, well, I just wanted to have the distinction that sirens are different from Merkel. Um, <laughs> I knew that. Okay. Hey, it's not the same thing. In it's Pirates not the Lord, exact same war. In Pirate's yeah. War, mermaids are sirens at the exact same time. Exactly. Um, Captain Jack. So yeah, you're going, there's these two spires underneath, which is the Coral Kingdom. It's the kingdom of the sirens and the siren queen. You'll remember she's the, the only reason she's a siren and her subjects are sirens is because her king got taken away so long ago. If you remember that. L. Um, and that's how the, that's what spawned the song of sorrow. So we pick up journals of a man throughout this tall tale. We pick up journals of a man who recovered the silver blade from Hart Junior's ship and basically refurbished it with his crew. They found a chest of endless sorrow, which was a chest of sorrow that wouldn't stop crying. And this chest caused them to be tracked down by sirens. They were taken below the waves. The silver blade is currently being de deconstructed in the siren city. And this guy, he was the only survivor, but he died of starvation down there. I know what you're asking. Why hasn't he come back from the fairy again? Hell. <laughs> he probably was turned into an ocean crawler. That's probably why. Trolled. Trolled. Yeah, I think like like you said, if you spend a certain amount of time with the mermaid, you turn into one. Yeah, exactly. He was either turned into a siren or an ocean crawler. So, uh, sirens killed the crew, the end, deconstructing it. The chest of in the sorrow actually relates to the old story of how the sirens became the way they are after the king was murdered by the ancients that tried to make that they tried to make friends with. Uh, the siren queen never forgave land dwellers for this. Players go in there, they just <laughs> Defeat the Fuck Siren Queen, queen. she dies, she gets fucked up. Defeat the and queen. her daughter, by the way, her daughter is another Kraken. And this is the first time in game we ever see the full body of a Kraken. So all those little kids in the comments who are saying, well, Krakens are actually squids. No, we know for a fact now, Krakens in Sea of Thieves are big fish with tentacles at the end. So um, <laughs> they're, they're very different, very different. They just look like squids. They don't look, if you've seen a fish, look up Sea of Thieves Kraken, they don't look like squids. Yeah, they don't. Look Okay. Um, also, you 
three, um, so uh, you get to the final room in this tall tale, and you see three mermaid statues down there. You know, three people are being turned into ocean crawlers. You break them, though, and they reveal to, they are actually Mr. Dibs, Anna Maria, and Strum. Who were, oh. They were the crew of the Black Pearl, and they were being turned into ocean crawlers. Uh, Jackson Hellscape. Oh, no, Jack was on the sea of the Third Tall Tale sees the castaway and Mr. Gibbs send the player back to the sea with the damned time Jack Sparrow again. And to do so, they've got to travel through the events of Jack Sparrow's past, so it's kind of cool. In this Tall Tale, you actually, there's a lot of moments that's like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, if you've ever been on that. Yeah. Um, I have uh, once, and it's really cool. I got, I got most of the callbacks, and I was like, okay, they're, they're doing a bit of a thing here, because, you know, Land of the Dead. I don't know, that kind of looks like a squid. Fucking, I agree. I mean, it looks kind of similar to a squid, but it's not a squid. Just put a picture of the Kraken, right? I'm yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> Very when you're heading, put a picture of the Kraken whenever you say it. <laughs> no, make it the thumbnail. <laughs> and then for a title, it says, what do you think? And question mark. We'll have a poll in the comments. Yeah. We don't, uh, don't worry, it's just me and everybody in here that's going to be voting on it, so it's going to end up being a squid. So, um, we do battle with a few phantoms. Phantoms are a new enemy type in the game. They're ghost pirates. That just have the ability to fuck you up. Uh, oh, yeah. Because they can teleport. They're, they can teleport and do really really dash it. shit. Rare, like, you need to fuck him or move phantoms. <laughs> they're really yeah. skeletons, and you can fuck with what the phantoms Yep, they can, they're, they're really buggy right now, and yeah. they spawn very frequently. I fucking hate phantoms. They can one shot no, you. Don't get rid of they can one shot you, they can pirate and sludge you even better than yeah. uh, skeletons. Or send you back to the fucking ship. They're just, they're just fucking terrible. I hate phantoms. They're cool content. They are a cool concept though, and I hope that when they fix them, they are better. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you do battle with Phantoms, who are members of Captain Barbosa's crew. You don't actually see Barbosa in any of, the, um, any of these tall tales, but I think the cursed captain is bo voiced by Barbosa's actor, and also you do hear Barbosa's voice. So he's, he's in there in spirit. Um, so when you finally meet uh, Jack Sparrow at the end of the third tall tale, at first he's like, Oh yeah, you meet him in a tavern in the Fairy of the Damned, which is guarded by the cursed captain from earlier, who's this disembodied skeleton there. Um, and he lets him go in, and he refuses to go at first, and he's like, no, I don't want to go back. I'm having fun here in this tavern, and being dead. You can deal with all the alive stuff that's going on. And then this dude is just assailed by cancel culture, because first of all, um, Captain Pendragon shows up, and he's like, bitch, you have a duty to the Sea of Thieves now. You brought this danger to it, you're going to step back in there and do it. And then Wild Rose and fucking Eli Slate and George, they all show up and they say the same thing. So Jack Sparrow's like, okay, fine, I'll fucking go back and do it. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll go save the world again. Yeah, it's this, it's this really cool moment where like the music swells and all these characters come back. I fucking loved it. Um, all right, moving on to Fourth Tall Tale. Dark Brethren, in terms of lore drop, like in terms of lore drops, Dark Brethren is the biggest fucking bombshell of the season. Have you played this one yet? No. Yeah. Oh shit. The right. well, last time we like went through the whole thing. Oh yeah. Fuck. Oh, well, I'm sorry. It's gonna be spoilers. Uh, dude. Yeah. No. Not <laughs> listening. Okay. So this is where Calypso is finally revealed. This is where the castaway is finally revealed as Calypso. Yeah. Um. She sends you to the Coral Castle north of the map, which was constructed by the Sirens. They're still loyal to Davy Jones, even though the Siren Queen, Queen is dead. Um. In the Coral Castle, there are two sets of journals. <laughs> One set of journals is Wanda's. You guys remember fucking Wanda? Mm -hmm. And she basically describes how Flame Park betrayed her. You remember that moment when Stitcher Jim got betrayed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, Wanda gave a little nod, and she went to the back room, and while Stitcher Jim was fucking screaming in agony in the background, turning into a goddamn ashen lord, uh, Wanda was there, uh, like, okay, Flame Park, so now. Uh, I did what you wanted. Are you gonna go through the promise and make me the queen of the Sea of Thieves since you're gonna be the king of it? And Flamehart just fucking laughs in the face and calls her a sim. And she's like, well, shit, I've also been betrayed by Flamehart and he doesn't care about me. So, throughout the. Why, why Flamehart lets Wanda live? I don't know. Oh. He just lets her live. Maybe she escapes something. No, no, because if she kills her, guess what? She just comes back. She gets killed. Nope. So Wanda, um, she retreats, and she describes how now she doesn't, like, she still wants to see the Sea of Thieves burn, only so that Flameheart can't get his hands on it. Um, the second set of journals is written by a mysterious woman called First Mate Renee, 
which describes how she fell in love with a mermaid and ended up, he turned into a siren, causing her to do so in turn. Um, she will likely be the next siren queen, as far as I, the, I theorize that she will probably be the next siren queen. But that's just the game. That's just the game theory. Otherwise, like, I don't know why she would be so important, you know, to have a set of journals in the tall tale, unless she was just, like, if she was just a siren, that's kind of pointless to even mention her. Um, but no, I think she might be more important. Maybe it's just world building. Maybe it is just world building. Uh, check ten. Check ten. Ten. You're good. All right. Okay, guys, we're almost done. All right. Making your way through the castle, you stumble upon a meeting of the dark brethren. The dark. If you don't know. Wait, the what? The Brethren Court is basically the, <laughs> the, the Brethren Court. It, it's a it's a pirate thing. When you got a bunch of pirate captains together, it's called the Brethren Court. It's a, it's a Pirates of the Caribbean thing. I don't think it's a real life thing. I don't know. Um, they do mention Morgan and Bartholomew coming up from Pirate Cove on those pages, and that is something that actually happens. Um, so the Dark Brethren is this fucking Avengers like alliance of all the of all the uh, snub big bads of the Sea of Thieves, all right, we've got four guys here. We've got Davy Jones, yeah. basically the head right now, kind of the second man, actually. We've got the Gold Hoarder, who's back again. Yeah, He's back, no. Rathbone's back. Um, my theory right now, Rathbone has all these like weird like sea bits sticking out of him, and he kind of looks like a member of Davy Jones's crew. I think Rathbone is part of the ship, part of the crew right now. I think he was part of Davy Jones' crew. He took the Falcon. Um, next person in the Dark Alliance <laughs> is Wanda the Warsmith. Her journals are here. It's pretty obvious she was going to be part of the Dark Brother. Yeah. Fourth person is Duke. Duke has turned fully evil. He has aligned himself with no the fucking Lord. way. Duke is actually fucking evil. He's yeah. a bad guy. He's a bad guy now. He was yeah. And. Yeah. What? what these four people have in common is in some way the pirate's life betrayed all four of them. The gold hoarder was cursed by his own treasure. Davy Jones was uh, forgotten by his lover Calypso. Um, fucking Wando was betrayed by her lover Florian Hart, and Duke was betrayed by Lorena, who leads the Bill Grass. My main man, yep. Duke, the man that's been here since the beginning of the man that has been seen. here since the Hunger and Deep. He's evil now. Yeah, it's a big fucking. When I figured out the four people that were sitting there, my jaw was on the fucking floor. I was like, there's no fucking way. Also, you know Philip from earlier, you know that turn that I mentioned in like, yeah, the yeah, comics? Yeah. Um, Duke might actually be his uh, uncle. Because, <laughs> like, uh, he mentions that, Philip mentions that he has a, uh, a Duke in Portugal. Like, he has an uncle in Portugal, and he says he's a Duke. And when he says Duke, like, the name is in bold. And I'm like, that doesn't make fucking sense, because Duke isn't actually. From, like, he's not actually a royal person, but oh well. Duke, I'm saying that right now, Duke might be Philip's uh, uncle, because if I don't mention that, someone's going to mention it. No one's going to mention it. No one's going to mention it. Anyway, the Gold Hoarder, uh, halfway through this meeting, you get an accommodation if you listen to the whole meeting. The Gold Hoarder's like, hmm, where's your captain? Um, and this reveals that the fifth member, there are five seats, one of them's empty. The fifth member of the Dark Brethren is Captain, who was. So Flame Heart Senior's old captain, who mentored Flame Heart Junior, yep. pawned them off against each other. Name was Captain. Um, David Jones said, "Captain will be here." Um, so anyway, you go in there. Um, remember the eight hundred and eighty-two pieces of Aztec gold from the first Pirates movie? Yeah. Uh, basically, David Jones is offering that as payment to the gold order. Um, and I'm sure that Duke and Wanda have their own rules as well. So if you go in there and you do a little Easter egg thing, you can unlock the dead man's chest, and inside is not Davy Jones' heart, it's just a little note. And the note says, now that you've got the trinket out of your eyes, I'll be sailing for you soon. And it's addressed to Davy Jones. In this note, I think either through the conversation or in this note, it is revealed that Captain currently has Davy Jones' heart. So Cap Davy Jones can do literally whatever Captain wants. And there is a seal, there's a seal stamp at the top right of the letter. And the stamp is made up of symbols. It's made up of the symbol of the skull, of two swords crossing, and a little feather coming off the hat of the uh, skull. 
and these are all images, although they're a little disconnected, these are all images that appear on the sails of the cursed captain's wreckage in Old Sailor's Grave, leading one to believe that the cursed captain may indeed be the mysterious captain that has been haunting the Sea of Thieves all this time. I know, guys. Big fucking bomb. <laughs> I know. Uh, just, in, just a game theory, though, that's actually might not be true. Oh, okay. <laughs> but basically, um, until I am proven, uh, I, I plead based until proven cringe, I think that the cursed captain is indeed captain. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you basically uh, follow Davy Jones and Rathbone and start doing this ritual. You basically stop them and make hell for a raid after you fight Rathbone a little bit. Rathbone's the gold player, by the way, if anyone wants to see. Um, we're going to go over that. Are we in the last one? We're on the last little bit of the legend. Ooh. Lords of the Sea, the final tall tale, 17th tall tale, last one right now. So, Calypso basically sends you uh, and Jack Sparrow to a, an area just north of Marauder's Arch. And here's this new coral spire, this is like the fucking third one in these tall tales, um, that Davy Jones is using as a hub for his ghost fleet. Uh, so you do battle with a big ghost fleet of Davy Jones. You have to destroy these siren statues as well. It's this fucking epic set piece. And then all of a sudden he summons like these really tough ghost ships. And Jack Sparrow's like, okay, we're gonna need a lot of fucking help here. So Jack Sparrow, he gets the, the Black Pearl back. You know, it fucking, it comes rushing in from the horizon with Mr. Gibbs and William Scrum on it. They help you through this next wave. And then they're like, and then Jack Sparrow's like, well, we're gonna need some way to fucking distract all these ships to get you on that spire so you can take it out. And then Pendragon's voice echoes in the heavens. He's like, I've got you covered. And then Eli Slates does the same. So does Wild Rose. So uh, three new galleons spawn in. They are the Black Witch, the Morning Star, and the Rose. And they, for some reason, the Rose is a galleon even though it's asleep in the fucking tunnel. Uh, <laughs> continuity error. Continuity error. Anyway, so these, this fucking alliance uh, that you have now starts fighting off the ghost ships while you climb the spire. Um, climbing the spire, you also find uh, Lord Cutler Beckett as a phantom. Um, he's guarding Davy Jones' chest. If you remember, Lord Cutler Bucket, Beckett was like the main villain of the second two Pirates movies. Um, uh, so yeah, he's guarding Venom's chest. You have to fight waves of phantoms in order to, one of them will drop the key to the dead man's chest, which you pick up and put it in there, and you see a pendant in there. Davy Jones' pendant that he was given Calypso Calypso strikes that motherfucker twice with lightning, and the coral spire begins to crumble. As you go out and get back on the ship, the coral spire fully crumbles. Davy Jones' flagship comes up. You have one final duel. You destroy the Flying Dutchman for good, at least for now, and he sinks below the waves. Davy Jones is defeated, and the Sea of Thieves is saved. You give him a black pearl for one last meetup. All your friends are there, Wild Rose, George, Pendragon, and Slate. Jack Sparrow even gives this little speech. Um, the ferryman lets Wild Rose and George return to the world of the living so that they can be members of uh, the Black Pearl's crew now. Everyone's happy, and Eli Slate and Pendragon stay behind because they don't want to fucking do that. <laughs> um, also, one last bit of speculation for you. The Black Pearl is a ship design that is bigger than any other ship in the game. It has Six crewmates on it when you see it sailing off in the distance at the end of the tall tale. I think that the Black Pearl might be a bit of a teaser for the Magic One. You know, you've got, at the end, you've got Sparrow, Mr. Gibbs, Amaria Scrum, and then Wild Rose and George. That's six people on a bigger ship than the Galleon. I think the Black Pearl might be a teaser for the Magic One. That's my last bit of speculation. Hayden's pogging out over here. <laughs> Jack Sparrow gives you a little speech. If you're a nerd back like me and you 100% of all the Pirate's Life tall tales, you get a new shanty. It's the Pirate's Life, like yo ho, yo ho, Pirate's Life for me a shanty. Black Pearl sails off into the sunset. And that's the end of Sea of Thieves. You guys are all cut up and you guys can do the Flags of Friendship event. If you guys are watching Yay. this, please go to sleep.
Just go to fucking bed. Just go to bed. I'm so sorry. I'm going to sleep. All right. I'm a professor here at Shepkin University. Introduce yourself. You already did. Talk to Oh, there it goes. Well, good night. Good night, folks.